Namaste. Well, hello there, everyone. It's such a pleasure seeing all of you once again on this uh, fabulous Monday. We're having a threesome tonight, and uh, we'd love it if you could join us. I am your co-host, Kat, the night editor, and with me as always is... I am Jay Ashiro Finney, an author, an alien in a human suit, and a man who, if you don't own all my books, what is wrong with you? My books are available on Amazon right now. They're not woke. They're excellently written, excellently illustrated, and you need all of them. And there's some very sexy characters in them. There's a woman in there as stacked as cat. <laughs> <laughs> and as always is the absolutely wonderful and fantastic Janelle. Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's having a fantastic Monday. I know I am. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm Monday. having a great Monday. Excellent. My Monday sucked because I am still <laughs> trying to finish this goddamn fucking Boobs of Steel book. And, I'm, I, you know, I'm writing. I'm getting to the near the end of this chapter. Then, holy shit, I've got to explain to the reader what the fuck all this trans shit is. That's right. I've got to, unfortunately, because this stuff doesn't make any goddamn sense to boomers, as your mom showed. Mm-hmm. I needed to explain what they meant by assigned gender at birth. I had to explain where this shit came from, like Judith Butler. And I had to explain why something as simple as that stupid pink pussy hat is apparently transphobic. Because it assumes that all women have vaginas. Are you serious? That's a thing now? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, wow. I, I've honestly just dug myself further under the rock. <laughs> if, if you catch what I mean, like I, yeah. I've kind of shut myself out from the rest of the world. I can't take I, it anymore. <laughs> I I can't believe it. I'm, I'm actually happy. That means man eaters is evil. Other <gasps> people agree with me that man eaters is evil. That I hate that trans shit, but you know, man, they think man eaters is evil. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so if. The but circle assuming... is complete. <laughs> Wait, so that means feminine products are also evil, right? Because yes. not all women have periods. Right. Yes. Uh, no, that is absolutely 100% true. Um, when I was getting into the whole thing about um, where this all comes from, because, you know, I start with a simple concept like, well, okay, why are boobs offensive? And it just goes down this rabbit hole to, well, they're offensive because they don't want to even have an answer. Because... Explaining what a woman is is now even controversial. That's so, so weird. You know, you're <laughs> getting, s- you know, oh, go ahead. Supreme Court judges who are afraid to answer what a woman is. You've got entire medical fields that now talk about chest feeding and uh, vagina having bodies. And I'm sorry. It's so <laughs> offensive. It's stupid. <laughs> Cer- cervix havers. And. <laughs> Not all, women, yeah, <laughs> not all women have cervixes. <laughs> oh. I, I, again, it, it's 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 so offensive. It's stupid. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know what to say. <laughs> and I'm finally bringing it full circle, though. How did we get from boobs to cervix havers? Because it isn't just the erasure of the words when you finally get to one of their favorite terms chest feeding that's right it's not called breastfeeding anymore it's chest feeding because you know not all women have breasts okay i I gotta stop this right now as a mom as a person who's actually given birth to another human um if you don't have mammary glands you can't feed well if you are chest feeding that usually means flat chested Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. So you don't have the fucking glands. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, well, as a vagina having person and a cervix having person, I find this highly offensive. Exactly. Indeed. No, like seriously, I'm actually pretty insulted, especially be. being yeah, a woman who gave birth and actually breastfed. Sorry if that's too much information for people on the breastfeeding part. Sometimes I know people are not squicked, but modest about really? it. 
Oh, modest. I can modest, that. modest. Yeah. Like I, I, I understand that. I wasn't one of those people that just dumped out my tit and like, Hey, check it out. You know, here's my tit and I'm feeding my kid I actually covered myself up. Hey, hey, as um, a 13 year old boy, that was a great moment to see. <laughs> you know, as an adult, it's a bit awkward, but when you're 13, you're like, Whoa, <laughs> she just popped out. tit. It's huge too. <laughs> That just okay. That blows. No, it doesn't blow my mind. That just insults me. I, I agree. Well, it, it part of it, my pride of being a woman, and this isn't for every woman because not every woman wants to be a mom, and I get it. But part of my pride is being a woman, an actual, mm -hmm. you know, biological female, and having a child. And uh, just, uh, it, I'm supposed to be happy today. We're not. I don't want to be angry. <laughs> this well, needs to be a happy day. <laughs> I always was taught by what second and I guess third wave feminists that uh, woman isn't just biology. Woman is a mindset and an attitude. And they're actually not only are they trying to erase that word, they're trying to dumb everything down to just biology and then erase it. <laughs> well, no, it, it's disgusting. Yeah. Like I was saying, just because you're a woman doesn't mean that you're also a mom. There's different levels of woman, not levels. How do I want? Oh, well, you explained it correctly, Kat. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset and it's not just our biology. Mm -hmm. But and, it, biology is part of it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, but I'm saying that the way they're talking about biology, you know, you mm -hmm. are a cervix having person or you are the birthing person to this other person. Yeah. That, that just, fuck. <laughs> well, you know it's, the, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, and I'm putting this in the book because somebody fucking has to say it because none of the feminists will take, well, okay, one has. One has taken responsibility and she wasn't part of it. That's Deborah So. Mm -hmm. But other than that, every one of these uh, boomer feminists who are now pissing and moaning that they've been shit on and deplatformed and canceled, it's like, you know, you created this. Mm -hmm. This is your monster. It was all of your bullshit rhetoric that built this. <laughs> None of this would have happened if it hadn't been for you fucks. Well, what about Christina Hoff Summer? She actually wrote a book about how feminism today has destroyed men mm -hmm. and how boys are being indoctrinated and destroyed. Mm -hmm. Like she's actually out there acting more as a men's right act advocate than a oh, feminist and she's second wave and she's amazing i have so oh, much I, yeah, I don't know what happened woman. to based mom that's what they called her yeah oh based i love that did yeah, you guys actually, ever see the the thing that she did with stephen crowder and milo yiannopoulos oh that was great I, oh I actually, my god the trickly that was, puff <laughs> yes. that was when i found out that crowder actually was very very funny <laughs> when he didn't hold back that was great when he called out Trigglypuff. Yeah. <laughs> Trigglypuff, Jesus Christ. Because she does look like Jigglypuff. She did. <laughs> that was one of the best memes that came out of that. But I, I had to, I laughed my ass off when Milo Yiannopoulos said that feminism was cancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was right. Yeah, exactly. And he's not wrong. I mean, look at the cancer has become so cancerous, it's eating itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is honestly, it's cringe, but it's beautiful at the same time. But yeah, I, I find it utterly hilarious that you've got like, um, let's see, uh, Betty Friedan and Robin Morgan and Jermaine Greer, Margaret Atwood, mm -hmm. all of them pissing and moaning that they're getting canceled and being called turfs. It's like, you built the house. That, <laughs> that caused this. Yes, this is your creation. It was all of your anti-gender uh, stuff. This whole thing about you know gender isn't real, that sex differences aren't real. It, mm -hmm. You guys caused this, and now you're pissed because uh, because now there's men in your ladies' room, and uh, there are men who want to share your locker rooms. Mm -hmm. Well, no. I'm surprised Margot Atwood is even saying anything. She needs to shut the fuck up. She's caused the whole abortion hysteria with the yeah. Handmaid's mm -hmm. Tale. I am yeah. sorry. She needs to shut the hell up and sit down. She caused 
so much of this hysteria. No, well, she's a terrible person all the way around. Oh, I mean, yeah. Really, there's no other way. She is just an awful person. I mean, I read The Handmaid's Tale in my 20s. You know, it, it was such a, a nice edgelord book. But, you know, I go back and I would read it. Now I'd be like, this woman thought that a small part of the American community, the fundamentalist uh, Christians that were, um, uh, you guys know, like Jerry Falwell and all those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That caused, you know, hysteria, I guess you'd say, um, were like the encompassing of all North America, or I should say all of the U.S., when she wrote that book. And no, I'll, I'll go a step further. She pretended that the uh, the religious right of the United States was as bad or worse than fucking Islam. And it's like, lady, shut up. <laughs> oh, wait, no. She said that Star Wars was the reason that we had the terrorist attacks on 9-11 because the X-Wings and the Millennium Falcon would fly between buildings and spaceships. And it was just like 9-11. She oh, literally that put that right. shit on George Lucas. I'm not joking. Go look up the interview, people. You can find it. This Margaret Atwood, 9-11, Star Wars. Look it up. Oh look, let's just all the gray feminists are fucking crazy. Yeah. They've always been fucking crazy. They're all crazy cat ladies. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, you know, I, I don't like, okay. I just don't really like cats anymore because of those women. And I used to love cats. I had a cat named Lucifer. It was a black cat with a Aww. bone spurt in the middle of its head. And she used to nest in my hair. Aww. Yeah, she, she belonged to our roommate, but our roommate treated her like shit. So Steve and I adopted her. And we called her Lucy. And she was gorgeous. And I loved her. And I used to love cats. And now I look at cats and I'm just like, ew. And that's sad <laughs> because cats are pretty awesome. There's only one cat I still like, and we have a neighborhood cat, and his name is Jimmy Elgato. And he Aww. was adopted from Tijuana, and he everybody in the neighborhood has treats and toys for him because he'll just show up on your, your uh, porch one day and be like, hey, what's up? And then, you know, you pet him, and he whores himself out for pets, and then he goes on his merry way. It's the only um, cat I like. Can you actually name any good feminists who are, I mean, actual feminists? Because let's face it. Christina Hoff Summers and Camille Paglia are not really feminists. No. I mean, can you actually no. name some good cat feminists? Seriously. Uh, okay. Well, you answer because I, I, I can't think of any. I think you just named off the only ones that I know that are decent. <laughs> so, well, uh, maybe Gloria Steinem because she saved Wonder Woman. That's like the She's only still a good piece thing of she shit. Did. Actually, is, she. Is, the oh, I was going to say, she, she showed how they. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, uh -huh. you don't talk to me. We Rochambeau time. for who goes first. <laughs> I was going to say, she'll just go with whatever opinion is popular at the time. Okay. I was going to say that she actually uh, went undercover at one of the Playboy clubs, I think it was in New York. Mm -hmm. Showing how they were mistreating the the Playboy bunnies that were the waitresses, making them work like twelve hour shifts without eating. They even made a movie about it with Kirstie Alley, if I remember correctly. But her yeah, that and cool. Wonder Woman is the only thing I and that she was Christian Bale's stepmother at one point. Really? Yep. Oh wow, that's pretty funny, actually. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just think. Any woman who proudly brags that she's had 11 abortions is just not someone I want to speak well of. Mm -mm. Oh, God, so, that's so disgusting. Yeah, she's uh, very proud of it. Wait, this is Gloria Steinem? Yeah. Oh, ew, never mind. No, fuck that shit. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so let's talk about Doctor Strange, because that's all you're really here for. You don't really give a fuck okay. about any of this. Okay, I do have to make a shout-out. I have to make a huge shout-out to just a passerby thank you thank you for sending me a lego doctor strange you all seriously this dude has to have some sort of precognition because he put it in the mail in february for me and it arrived on my doorstep on friday the day doctor strange was released <laughs> holy shit yes so, you know, that's some next level shit right there. So thank you, just a passerby. 
for sending me my little Doctor Strange. That's so cute. <laughs> so, I okay. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange <clears throat> in the uh, multiverse of madness or whatever. The... Okay. Spoilers. I... The way it starts out is not what you expect. You know, it starts out with Strange deciding, hey, I'm, I'm sick of New York. This is shit. I'm tired of all the superhero stuff. And he takes a vacation and goes up to a cabin in the woods. And it starts out normal. And he finds this book and he reads it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I know magic. And then the deadites are coming out of the floor. And he has to, like, cut his arm off and get a chainsaw. And he's running around like Doom with the shotgun and the chainsaw. And then he time travels back to the medieval ages. And he, he turns into a bunch of little people. And I don't know. But, but, I just but, feel... but you're, you're forgetting the part where the, the woman who plays... You know, where Archer's mom shows up as Morgana. Yeah. To fight him. And then they get it on because he looks like John Holmes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and... Sorry. <laughs> but then it ends with him working at like a Kmart. Well, yeah. Because where else are you going to get your stuff? Okay, as you've guessed, I haven't actually seen the film. <laughs> but we are going to do spoilers. Uh, one person and, here has... And, and there was a Doctor Strange movie where he did look like John Holmes and uh, what's her name? Who played Archer's mom. Jessica yeah. Walters. It, yeah, Jessica Walters. She was hot in her youth. Yeah. She was yes, really she was. I, I'm kind of sad we didn't actually get... Uh, sorry, my alarm just went off. I forgot to turn it off. Um... I'm surprised they never made a porn out of that Doctor Strange after it came out, because it should have been a porn. <laughs> that it was it during been. the golden age of porn when it was made. Well, like they, they had the stashes and the outfits and everything. It would have been great. Well, the fact that it's implied that uh, Doctor Strange was indeed banging every female in the ward that he was working in. Yeah. You know. Oh my! That would have really actually been a great porn. You know, he's, uh, he's Dr. Let me use my magic fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that fucking outfit. <laughs> well, there he actually looks like the Sorcerer Supreme, but the actual outfit they have him running around in is pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> there we so, go. yes, I went and saw Dr. Strange on Saturday with my husband, my kid, and my kid's friend. And... Um, I give it a 7 out of 10. Um, it's decent, but it has its problems. Uh, as I was telling Kat and Ishi earlier before the show, I um, feel... Real quick, oh, yes? uh, spoiler alert, alert, just in case something slips or in case you want to say it. For those of you who don't want to be spoiled, um, check back with us in about 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So... Um, as I was telling Kat and Ishii, it felt like it was the feels felt like it was two movies smushed into one. It was a horror movie and a superhero movie. They, if they would have stuck with pure horror, I probably would have given it a ten out of ten. Um, America Chavez was annoying, but not as annoying as I thought she was going to be. Sam Raimi reigned that shit in. Uh, That's good. Uh, Wanda went full villain, which I was incredibly pleased about. I didn't think they were going to do that because, you know, women have to be good guys. Now, my what I'm going to bitch about, um, Wong is the Sorcerer Supreme. He did not give the title back to Stephen Strange after the, the blip. Yep. So Doctor Strange is no longer the Sorcerer Supreme. Uh Let's see what the else. Dick. Um, oh, so, so wait. Is that Jessica Walters? Yeah. Wasn't I, she that's where it's you? Morgan, isn't it? Or Morgana? Yeah. yeah. She's so hot. Yes. She's so hot. She's such a beautiful woman. I was so sad when she passed away because I got to see her every year at Comic Con at the Archer panel. And she was, she was truly a classy lady. Everybody else yeah. up there is being raunchy as hell. But Jessica Walters was just poise. And Grace at those panels. Wonderful woman. I actually didn't know she passed. I'm sad now. Yeah, she passed a year or two ago. Oh. 
Yeah, like she was able to do one more archer and then she passed away. So they got one more season. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. But uh Sorry, we got we got derailed by Jessica Walters. <laughs> yes, we did. So so, um, so, uh, so Strange is no longer the Sorcerer Supreme. No, Wong is. Oh, so we can get more diversity. Is that it? That uh, I'm thinking actually was to please China because China was pissed about other things in the film. They wanted them to refilm a bunch of scenes. Um, mm -hmm. I know that the movie is banned in Saudi Arabia because of America Chavez. So I did hear about that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of yes, women go queen slay in this movie, which pissed me off. Mm. Uh, that was unnecessary. I do feel in the end, it wasn't really Dr. Strange's movie. Um, where at least in like Captain America or Spider-Man No Way Home, it's still Captain America was the hero. Spider-Man was the hero they yeah. were focusing on dr strange and america chavez mm -hmm. which i was like no uh they end up in a perfect universe where you get to see the illuminati and yes i did geek out at this part because john krasinski is mr fantastic he is reed richards they actually oh, wow. got Anson Mount to come back. He played Black Bolt in the Inhuman show. He came back as Black Bolt in the fucking outfit with the tuning fork head. It was glorious. Cool. Things I didn't like. Captain Carter was part of the Illuminati. Captain and then Carter? they had Captain Marvel. But it wasn't Brie Larson's Captain Marvel. And it, they did this. Okay, this one really pissed me off. It she was killed all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish, except oh, okay. for Monica Rambeau. But here's the deal. They didn't even make Monica Rambeau Captain Marvel again. Oh, no, they made her mother, Maria Rambeau, Captain Marvel. So they fucked Monica Rambeau over again. What? Yeah. So that one pissed me off. I was like, no, if they were going to do Captain Marvel, it should have been Monica Rambeau, especially because of WandaVision coming out. Uh. The, the best part for me, though, was Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier coming out in the yellow hover chair. And they played the X-Men theme song as he came out. Really? Yes. And I actually, I nerded out. I had tears in my eyes. I was like, oh, my God. This was the best part, too. It was Xavier. It was Claremont Xavier. Oh, they even cool. have him do a mind battle with Wanda. And you remember in the comic books how when he would go into a tortured mind, a lot of times it would be white, but there would be rubble in places. And he wore the black pants with the black turtleneck. Yeah. And he'd be, that's how he was. And that's what her mind looked like. And he even had, you know, when he'd open the doors to go through parts of their mind, he did that. So Sam Raimi and I guess the guy who wrote this did their homework when it came to Charles Xavier. I was so pleased. Um, a oh, wait, lot of so people... Oh, go ahead. So, again, do the Illuminati survive or not then? Okay. The Illuminati got fucked up by Wanda in the most brutal fashion. But here's the thing that really pissed me off. Black Bolt loses his mouth. She literally says, how can you scream if you can't talk? And erases his mouth. And he panics and screams and blows his own brains out. You can see his head cave in as blood squirts out of his nose and ears. Like, like I said, this was a horror movie, guys. What? And then she asked Reed Richards if he had, because he's like, I have a family too. And she's like, do you have, is their mother still alive? And, you know, he says, yes. She's like, okay, good. Because at least they'll still have one parent who will take care of him before she unravels him completely. And then oh uh, Captain Carter and Captain Marvel team up and they start kicking her ass. And this is where I got really happy. She takes Captain Marvel's shield and she fucking bisects her dude cuts her in half oh my god and then captain marvel like you think captain marvel may get the upper hand but wanda use that you have to at this point wanda has been completely corrupted and taken over by the dark hold she's full-blown fucking evil crazy and i loved every second of it she crushes captain marvel underneath a statue 
And then the really sad part that I actually got really upset in the theater and said no was when the demon was able to overtake Charles Xavier and snap his neck. So now Prof mm. Professor X is dead too, huh? Yes. The only survivor of the Illuminati was Carl Mor Mordo, and that was only because Doctor Strange actually did beat him. He, they got in a fight and without magic, no less. He was able to beat him without magic. And so Carl Mordo was a good guy. Oh, yes, this is the other thing. All Doctor Stranges are assholes and easily corruptible across the entire multiverse. They are arrogant and awful, <laughs> except for this one. Well, they also established arrogant. that. Arrogant, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, but it was like every Doctor Strange got corrupted by power. Like the, every one of them was like, either I'm going to steal your power or I'm going to accept the power of the dark hold and become corrupted. I don't buy that. Yeah, neither did I. I thought that was bullshit. They did um, establish that the MCU is the 616 and that the Fantastic Four did exist in the MCU in the 1960s because Doctor Strange says to Reed Richards, hey, weren't you big in the 1960s? So they, they did. There's a lot of fan service. Uh, they but did do Marvel they planning zombies. On bringing, uh, weren't they planning on bringing back Fantastic Four and the X-Men into the uh, MCU? This was the introduction, just saying that there's going to be others that can show up. But Oh, so there are, off... other, there are other Mr. Fantastics and Professor X's that can show up? Yes. So yeah, it's meaningless. They... Of yeah. course. I think it was more the shock value of yeah. seeing like all these badass, powerful characters get worked by a chaos magician that was possessed by a demonic book. That was well, one thing I did not find realistic. You've got a guy that can shake people to death with his voice. And I seriously doubt if he lost his ability to talk, the first thing he would do is scream and blow his own brain apart. Reed Richards would have probably trapped her ass before she even got in through the fucking... Oh, yeah. She takes out an army of Ultrons. Really? Yeah. See, now we're getting to the parts that I don't like. Well, she took well, out an entire fucking army of Ultrons. Are they... With all of this, are they setting it up for House of M? No. I think this because, was their House of M. Spoiler mm. alert, everyone, Wanda sacrifices herself and kills herself at the end Ugh. of the movie to destroy all the dark holds across the entire Weak. multiverse. Weak. But other Wandas do exist. And the other Wandas who had children, it looks like they never got corrupted. By, they uh, decided not to use the dark hold. And I think that's why they still have their kids. But here was interesting, too. All the Wandas, it looked like, were single moms. No dads. Of course. Yeah, so they didn't even bring Vision in, which really pissed me off. Yeah, that they should have brought Vision in. Well, they didn't even bring back Agatha Harkness. They, they set up the end of WandaVision to make it seem like she was going to be needed. Um, and I think they... When they rewrote that script, I don't know if you guys knew, but Kevin Feige said that uh, Doctor Strange was supposed to show up at the end of WandaVision to help her be Agatha Harkness. But then in Kevin Feige's words, he said, we didn't need a white male saving the female protagonist. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Um, apparently that got cut out of the movie because Tom Hiddleston said he was in the film and they cut like 40 minutes out of the film. What? Yeah. So, yeah, I think Tom, Tom Cruise was seen on, remember those pictures that came out of Tom Cruise in a um, mocap suit? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was supposed to be Tony Stark. And that didn't show up in the movie either. I'm okay with that. Mm. I, I'm okay with that too. But I was really bummed about Tom Hiddleston because Loki obviously tied into this movie as well. well he'd be feeding off of this shit show i mean seriously. oh absolutely no 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 i agree i agree he'd be all over that so uh they actually did have a marvel zombies where uh dr strange had to possess a uh, alternate version of himself that was dead and that's where uh, the deadites show up but they're called oh. the souls of the damned okay that's actually funny 
It is funny because he uses the, the, I'm going to call them deadites. I'm not going to go through They're the deadites. Whole, uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. It's Sam Raimi. They're deadites. <laughs> what is so good is that he's got an alternate version of uh, Christine, what's her name? Rachel McAdams' character who had a bitter relation. Oh, apparently all of the Christines and Strange ended up breaking up because he was too arrogant to be with. Um. <laughs> So she got um, hired by Reed Richards. Long story short, she's an assistant of the Illumi She's like the main scientist of the Illuminati, and she's the only one that survives. And uh, they, they have to save America Chavez because uh, Wanda wants to dream her like a... Uh, yeah, pretty much. But for story reasons, wants to drain her power so then she can have access to the entire multiverse so she can have access to all of her children across the multiverse because at this point she's absolutely fucking nuts i don't think that works but okay <laughs> yeah well at the beginning of the movie this alternate doctor strange that ends up getting killed tried to drain her powers too and she's like i thought you were my friend why are you betraying me just like shut up america again i don't see why america chavez we've already now introduced you can have access to fucking reed richards i mean dude can make you something <laughs> Oh, no, I know. I really didn't understand why they had this, had her in the movie except for fan service. Because literally when she would punch her way through reality, it would be a star, would be the portal. Really? A fucking star-shaped portal, people. Isn't that great? <laughs> I'm a star. That's for time. <gasps> oh, dear Lord. Uh, so, yeah, the... Uh, there's this cool scene where the deadites are trying to get to Dr. Strange and they attack Christine. And that's when you get the Sam Raimi deadite filming where the camera's up in their face and it's shaking like crazy. Cause it's supposed to look like the deadites are attacking. You know what I'm talking about? Like an evil dead and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They did that. And I was like, Oh shit, dude, we got evil what dead. I give for that tree. <laughs> uh, I, I was actually hoping that the tree was going to be in the movie. The tree versus America Chavez. There you go. <laughs> I, I would pay for that. Can, can we get one of those porn parodies where it's Tree versus America Chavez? You wouldn't need the porn parody. That's what really happened in the movie. I know, but, you know, <laughs> it, it's America Chavez. <laughs> um, oh, the, I forgot to say, Bruce Campbell makes his obligatory. Uh, oh, okay. At least he's in it. Yeah, and because America was like, oh, in every reality, only your reality is where you have to pay for food. Food is free every place else. No oh, bullshit. And then Bruce Campbell, who plays the guy that's selling food, is like, no, you have to pay. And he starts, like, yelling at her. And Dr. Strange is like, yeah, you, basically, long story short, beat yourself up for three weeks. So Bruce Campbell just starts beating the shit out of himself. And apparently, that is supposed to be the Marvel version of Ash from Evil Dead. Really? Yeah. Thanks, Marvel. I'm not sure if that was just somebody's wishful thinking, but apparently that was supposed to be a version of Ash. Does Disney own the Evil Dead movies now? Is that part of one of their millions of acquisitions? I don't think so. That's why I don't think it is Ash. I think that was just people, like, because, you know, they had Army of Darkness versus Marvel Zombies. Well, where Ash. oh, yes. Well, as you know, in nations where food is free, nobody goes hungry. <laughs> yeah. Ever. No. Like Cuba. And they have Pepe as currency. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I wish I was joking. That's real. Are you serious? In Jesus. Venezuela, they use uh, rare Pepe's as currency. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, yeah, they did try to pull the communist shit. Like I said, Sam Raimi was able to rein a lot of it. I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, yes, Ash was used as a bad joke against capitalism. I Yes, like my husband well, and I, why aren't movies we looked free at each that? other and just, mm -hmm. pardon? Why don't we get a scene where the movies are free then? Every other universe, the movies are free. And then have the studio heads punching themselves for three weeks because they don't give it to us free. I, I, I would pay to see Kathleen Kennedy punch herself for three weeks. Yeah. Hey, Hitman Wanderer says it was just a Bruce Campbell cameo. The That was the rumor engine saying it was Ash. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Because if Ash was to show up in those movies, he needs to have the fucking chainsaw hand. And yes, he has he to be going after Marvel zombies like he did in the comic book. 
And he needs his boomstick. Yes, the boomstick. He needs his fucking boomstick. He's not Ash without the chainsaw and the boomstick. Well, I will take Hollywood's communism seriously the moment they all stop doing it for money. Well, I like Redneck. What Redneck says, in communism, there is no bread shortage if there's no bread makers to begin with. Right. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> that actually is the logic. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, there is no sexism if there are no genders. Exactly. It's the same logic. Yeah, it was the same logic. What what little logic there is, that is it. <laughs> so let me uh, wrap this up because I know it's bad. So I'm just trying to get everybody out of their misery. Basically, Doctor Strange fights an evil version of Doctor Strange to try and get the Dark Hold. He gets the Dark Hold from the evil Doctor Strange, uses the Dark Hold to possess the corpse Doctor Strange to try and save America Chavez, but she saves herself and she's the one that beats Wanda by showing Wanda what a monster she is to all of her multiversal children who <sighs> think she's a witch because she was actually possessing another Wanda and made her go on a rampage that she used that Wanda to kill the Illuminati. So the kids were actually scared of the other Wanda. That, that's convoluted and stupid. You have a no, Wanda possessing another Wanda in order to just well, because she wanted to take that Wanda's life and uh, become that Wanda so she could be with her kids. And, you know, if something happened to those kids, she could always go to another Wanda and those kids. Like, that's the beauty of what I thought she was so evil. She's like, oh, I'm, I have an infinite amount of so children. So they stole from Rick and Morty. Yes! Yes! Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I screwed up this family. I've turned this world into apocalypse. I'm going to find one that's better. Uh, and Dark now Stranger. I'm going to kill that Rick and Morty so I can take their place. Yes. Actually, yes. By the way, Dark Stranger has a point. Elizabeth Olsen has no cleavage in this movie. They covered her up this time. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. I had meant to bring that up, and I had forgotten that he had said it earlier. So thank you. So this is why um, you shouldn't give Marvel or Disney any of your money. Pirate this. Oh, I didn't say that. No, no, no. You just hop into another reality where they're offering it yeah, for free. I would never encourage any of you to pirate. I would just say go to a reality, i.e. Um, VPN, mm -hmm. uh, that, that offers it free. What they call them mirrors? Yeah. <laughs> just step through a mirror and you know, go to a reality where it's communist and free. Uh, by the way, 12D, I agree with you. Fuck Rick and Morty. But when, in their infancy, they were entertaining. <laughs> I like the first season. Mm -hmm. After that, now. No, uh, the, the, the pickle Rick ended it. Yeah, actually, the second season was good, too. So long story short, America saves herself. Uh, Doctor Strange gets corrupted anyway and gains an evil third eye. And uh, I have to say that the battle between Doctor Strange and evil Doctor Strange was the best part of the Danny Elfman soundtrack because they actually use sound waves and music to battle each other, but it's not stupid. Like, See, that's you, cool. You get, you can hear some boingo in there with the way that everything sounds all crazy. It's like, nice. Okay, we're getting, yeah. So I like that part. And then the post, post credit scene at the end, I got all excited because here comes Clea and it's fucking Charlie's Theron. And she insults Dr. What? Strange by saying, you, you know, basically, you messed up the ultra or uh, the uh, multiverse. Are you too scared to help me? Seriously? Charlize Theron is Clea, people. We're going to have another feminist fucking movie. Mm. No wonder uh, Cumberbatch doesn't want to come back. Yeah. I don't blame him. Fuck this shit. No, they, they fucked Doctor Strange over. Like I said, mm -hmm. the movie should have just been Doctor Strange versus Scarlet Witch across the multiverse. I, I don't know if anybody saw an interview where they asked him what it was like to be in the movie and having other people in it. He's like, well, I don't really think it's a Doctor Strange movie. Meaning he, he even said he didn't really feel like he was the main character. So. Okay. Retneck. Whoops. Sorry. Wrong. one. That's not the right one. I'm sorry. Where did it go? It skipped up. There it is. Uh, 
BGC says, uh, you know, I wished and hoped, despite how pointless that the next Doctor Strange movie would have been. What if, what if number 40? I'm not familiar with that story. So I am curious now. You have me interested. Well, Clea is Doctor Strange's estranged wife in the comics, but she actually kicks ass in the comics. She was created by Steve Ditko. Yeah, um, Clea she's was the great. niece of Dormammu. Oh, so, wait, wait, wait. so they took a character that it was created by probably the most hardcore Randian libertarian of all of comics mm -hmm. and turned her into a liberal feminist cunt. Yeah. With the 30 seconds that she was in the film, I immediately disliked her. And I was pissed because I like Clea from the comics. Yeah, she's great in the comics. Yeah, but I mean, they cast fucking Charlize Theron and I'm just like... Why? Okay, I'm going to be perfectly brutal. Isn't she too old? Yes. Clea is actually supposed to be like, at least look 20 years younger than Strange, even though I think she's actually older because she's, you know, Dormammu's niece. So she's like hundreds of years old. But she's supposed to look young. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that was always the thing. Doctor Strange looked older, but she was actually older than him. If I'm remembering correctly, that shit could have been retcon. But I got mm -hmm. a feeling that they introduced Clea because when they do the next Doctor Strange movie, Doctor Strange is going to be killed off in the first 15 minutes. And she's going to become Doctor Strange because in the comics, they killed off Stephen Strange. And Clea is now the Sorcerer Supreme. Ugh. But he's not the Sorcerer Supreme. There's somebody else. Yeah. But she's probably going to get the title from Wong because Wong's going to realize that she's a strong female. Wong, you're Wong. Yeah, you cannot I was... give it to her. So what do you think happened to Kevin Feige? I mean, seriously, do you think that it was just like one day someone snuck up on him and just shot a whole bunch of estrogen up his ass and he pussied out or what? He probably so stuck I... his dick in Brie Larson. Yeah, that's probably it. I think it's the soy diet. Up the ass. Yeah. Soy animus. Yeah. Oh, check out Dark Stranger, what he says. He said something to me. Yeah, um, read this. I saw Cumberbatch's interview on, on this film about his character. It gave me flashbacks to Mark Hamill during The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, talking like he's happy but dead inside. Oh, I, I had the guy. same feeling when I, I saw those interviews. Because if you see interviews back from when he did the first Doctor Strange, he used to go in costume to comic book stores for fun. I remember And just that. walk around. And then people would realize who he was and freak out. Like, we're talking about a Shakespearean trained actor was awesome enough to go, like, fanboy out with other fans and totally walk around as Doctor Strange and not give a fuck. And he loved the character. And now he's just like, I don't, I, he does look dead inside. And that's why I said the movie should have just been a horror film about Doctor Strange battling the Scarlet Witch. And it could have been across the multiverse, but like what sucked is you got a taste of the evil and the demons that are in the multiverse the the pure evil like i was hoping we were going to get mephisto and nightmare because nightmares from dr strange like that's what i was hoping for and i think that's what they were going to do but then they were like no we can't scare people we can't have a horror film we're disney <laughs> even though you know disney had that whole stint in the 80s making some really scary shit well if they didn't yeah. want to scare people why brie larson at all i mean yeah exactly <laughs> I mean, just one look at that face. Holy shit. Uh, you know, they're most likely killing her off in the second Marvel's movie, Miss Captain Marvel movie, and probably going to let Teona Parsons become Captain Marvel. I, I, I can't even. Uh, BGC says that uh, what if number 40 was what if Doctor Strange never became the master of the mystic arts? It was a profound story uh, impeccably written by Peter Gillis, art by Forgotten Legends, Jackson Goosey and Christy Sheely. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but see, that sounds interesting. Instead, he became Bicycle Repairman. See, I'd watch that. <laughs> I'd watch Cumberbatch's Bicycle Repairman. <laughs> So, yeah, guys, um, if you are chomping at the bit to see it, just wait till it comes out and is cheaper on DVD or 
you know, pirate it. I mean, I went and saw it partially because it had my son's two favorite Marvel characters in it. And uh, I, I, I got a, I told Kat an issue this, I think you guys will laugh. Whenever Wanda was justifying her evil, I could hear my son next to me saying, she's got a point though. Yeah, You know, she's right. You know, people you haven't have been nice to her. <laughs> You're going to have to have a talk with him. Yeah. <laughs> Look, even good characters can make bad decisions. <laughs> I just thought it was great, though. It is. That's actually really cute. <laughs> I'm sorry. He probably would hate me if he heard me say that it was cute, but it is. Oh, yeah. We're, we're at the age now. We're saying he's cute or handsome. Mom, stop it. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> I can't even put my arm around him. I was like, Mom, my friends are looking. Don't do that. <laughs> Wow. Well, I'm glad that from your description, I, you said that it was a seven out of 10. I, I will admit uh, I was fearing lower than that, um, a lot lower. So I'm still not going to see it. No, but, uh, you know, to hear that it's not all bad and that there, there is some fun moments. Um, does this, you know, oh, the seven out of 10 comes from the fact that Raimi was actually able to somewhat polish a turd. Uh, Danny Elfman's killer soundtrack and Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen. Honestly, because when they would interact, that was some good shit. I mean, she, the Scarlet Witch goes and annihilates the main school of the sorcerers and kills people in a horrific fashion. And it was, that was her being quote unquote, reasonable i mean you actually see one of the sorcerers burn from the inside out oh wow yeah so that's why i said like it's a superhero movie and a horror movie smooshed together and it shouldn't be uh there there was a great scene where uh Doctor Strange realizes that Wanda is fully corrupted and she's in this beautiful apple orchard and then she removes the the glamour and it's this post-apocalyptic wasteland that everything's like burned down and dead and that was where she had been learning how to use the dark hold and like I was like oh is this what we're getting are we getting this and then you know stupid superhero shit showed up mm. so yeah like I Maybe I should probably give it a lower score, but honestly, I I think Sam Raimi did the best he did could with what he was given. Um, I that's probably the last Marvel movie I'm gonna see. Like that really just I went to see that with my kid because, like I said, two actually three of his favorite characters are in that movie because Ultron was in it as well. No, oh. no James Spader though. I was really. At first, I was bummed, but after I watched the rest of the movie, I was like, yeah, I wouldn't come back to voice lines for that either. It's very interesting how many of those actors are never coming back. Now they've all said, no, nah, this is the, the muck's too deep for me. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, like I was really surprised that they killed off Scarlet Witch, but I have a feeling that Elizabeth Olsen was like, yeah, I'm out. She's made uh, her money. She and she's good. She she actually did say, I'm out, I'm gone. Yeah. So, and I actually think Paul Bettany even said he's out, and that's why Vision wasn't there anymore. And it sounds like uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is going to try and break contract and get out. And you know what? Good mm -hmm. for him. I've heard that uh, he's already done so. So, well, uh, Chris was not happy that at the end, America Chavez joined the Sorcerer's Supreme. And he was like, She's not allowed to take the Scarlet Witch's spot. I don't like her. Uh, Nobody give, likes her. Give that no. kid an ice cream. Jeez. <laughs> I well, approve. I, on well, a kind of funny note, Chris was really into the movie and not paying attention. And he was shoving red vines in and eating them and made himself <laughs> sick. And to leave the movie for a little bit because he's like, I think I'm going to puke. I think I'm going to puke. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. You, you got to teach him to use the red vines to drink your soda through. It makes he doesn't last like, longer. He <laughs> doesn't like carbonation. He says it feels weird. Oh, okay. You know what? That's good. That's good and healthy <laughs> for him. No carbonation. 
Yeah, I, I am happy that he probably won't be a soda drinker, but he sure is addicted to chocolate milk. Though you've seen yeah. Chris, he's real thin. Yeah, so you know that, and there's worse things than chocolate milk. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you know, at least uh, that has a uh, you know vitamin A. <laughs> um. So yeah. that's my my whole thing on uh, Doctor Strange on a completely different derailing topic. Um, I went to a small convention uh, two weekends ago with my nephew and my husband. It was really awesome. It was at the Scottish Rite Center. We went to the sci-fi panel. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but the movie Red Sonja with Bridget Nielsen, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger is Conan in that movie, but they weren't yes. able to get the right, so they just called him the Barbarian. But I that did was know fucking that. I did not know that, and I just freaked out in happiness. I was like, I knew it. It was Conan. Yep. Uh, he They named him Kalidor instead, but yep, he was supposed to be uh, Conan. But Kalidor and was an alias of yeah, Conan. That is true. Yeah. And, I guess uh, in the credits, didn't they call him the Barbarian, not Kalidor or Kaladin or whatever? I think they did, but he went yeah. by the name of Kalidor. Uh, also, the um, uh, choreographer and... Uh, um, Swordmaster uh, was the same for both movies. Really? And so that that guy that you actually see for like two seconds in the um, first movie of, of Conan teaching mm -hmm. Conan how to fight, that actually mm -hmm. was the Swordmaster. And uh, he was the same choreographer for both films. That's interesting. Did you also know that Conan was supposed to narrate the first film, but they were so afraid people wouldn't be able to understand Arnold Schwarzenegger because his thick accent? They instead had uh, Mako. Mako or Mako mm -hmm. do it. Yeah, which so I'm fine with. He was great, with. though. Yeah. Yeah. That was more appropriate. That and uh, he was supposed to be more talky, more like the Conan from the books. But again, they chose not to. And I think that was a good choice. You know, I know Conan is supposed to be kind of campy and stuff from the books. But there's just something about Arnold's serious Conan and Conan the Barbarian that was just, in my opinion, so much more better. Mm -hmm. Plus, you had Sandal Bergman. No, have, have you read the books? No, I haven't. Yeah, they're not campy, but they're very pulpy. And damn, Conan talks a lot. <laughs> when but, I say uh, campy, I've read the comic books oh, and they goodness, seem different. campy. So I never read the actual books. I haven't read the comics, but um, okay. I haven't like cracked open a book and tried to read Conan, but I did. I've attempted at least three different audio versions and I have come to the conclusion that nobody can read those books out loud. No, no, no. If they had gotten Mako to do it. Well, okay. Yeah. If they'd gotten Mako to do it, that would have been good. But all of the, um, the readers that I've listened to, suck I, they've been god awful <laughs> and it's like you can't <laughs> same with um uh solomon kane uh i've tried with uh different audio versions of Sol solomon kane and i've just come to the conclusion howard cannot be read to you you have to read it yourself no i just think you really need the right voice actor to do it i mean unfortunately the conan readers i've all heard are always like then conan climbed the wall and he raised his sword. It's like, no, 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 no. This is Conan. We, we need some deep voice. And the barbarian climbed the wall and hacked the head off. Of the <laughs> <laughs> they also read it very fast. Yeah. Everybody reads it very fast. Well, I should probably get the books. Um, I've I, always wanted to. I wanted to get those and John Carter of Mars. All those nice old pul pulpy yeah. adventure slash mm -hmm. fantasy sci-fi. But I have so many books to read now. <laughs> I've, I've actually got a pile. Kat, you'll appreciate this. I also got mm -hmm. the omnibus of the first three books of Vampire Hunter D, the actual novels. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. So, yeah. That I've, I've good had, shit. <laughs> yeah, I've had them for a month, and I've been meaning to tell you, but, like, stupid shit. We always end up talking about how pop culture's gotten stupid. <laughs> so... Well, that's something that's not stupid, and Vampire Hunter D is great, and the other great thing about it is that you can read those stories in almost any order. It really doesn't matter. I've totally read them out of order. 
Like I went from book three to book four to now I'm on, what is it? Book like 13, um, which is technically, you know, the, it's technically two books in one because the story spans four books. Mm -hmm. So um, great shit, but uh, that's awesome that you got it. So you'll have to let me know what you think. Um, Book one is the first movie. Book three is the third movie. Book three is the second movie. Yeah. Okay. I've only seen the first movie, but I've read the the two um, manga novels based on the first and second book. Excellent. So I was like, I did. I had no clue that they actually came from novels. When I found out, it's like, holy shit! I've been missing out. I'd rather read it in novel form. Don't get me wrong. Manga's good. Anime's great. But I really like books. I, I will take a book most of the time. I'm with you. It was the same way for me when I found out about um, Boogie Pop and uh, No Longer Human, uh, where it's like, wait, this is this is an actual book book. Uh, I am so there. Where can I get this? <laughs> I also uh -huh. wanted to let Ishi know that yeah. there is hope. My husband got me for my birthday uh uh, was it the Immortal Red Sonia first issue? Ah, and the cover she has got a chonky booty, and she's got these thick muscular thighs. Is it Frank Joe? No, actually, uh, the artist uh, he goes by DNA. It's David something. Um, and it was written by Dan Abnett, and it was a fantastic fucking story. And she, at first I was like, why is she covered in chain mail? Why is she not wearing the chain mail bra? But you find out that she's wearing cursed chain mail that has hooked into her skin and she can't take it off. And it's possessed by the vengeful spirit of King Arthur who wants revenge on Mordred and has basically merged itself to her body and she can't get it off. And so she's traveling to the cursed land of Camelot because when Mordred used the dark magic, it cursed the whole kingdom and killed everybody off or turned them into demons. But she has tits and an ass. That's the most important part, people. She has tits <laughs> and an ass in the comic. There is hope. And Dan Abnett's a great writer. So he'll probably do a great job of it. So is there time travel involved? Because there is kind of a, a time, different eras here. It's not explicitly said. Um, you get the feeling that it's a post-apocalyptic world due to magic. Oh, and she's not supposed to be there. And uh. you, I only got the first volume because Steve wasn't sure if I was going to like it. But I'm uh, because I'm a Dan Abnett fan because of Warhammer, he bought it for me. And I was like, I got to find the next volumes. And uh, they're all sold out, though. I'd have to buy it digitally on Kindle, which I really don't want to do because I hate giving money to Amazon. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's Dan Abnett. It's great. Uh, there's tits. There's You can see tits. You can see ass. The cover is cheesecake. I highly recommend it. It's called The Immortal Red Sonia. Cool. So yeah, I, I, kept, I wanted to tell you that first, but we started talking about Doctor Strange because I was so excited. I couldn't wait to tell you guys she has boobs again. Which is very good because they were idiots and got rid of them. Did you see when they got rid of him, they put her in a fucking baggy tunic and baggy mm -hmm. pants? I was like, are you out of your fucking mind? She's supposed to be a barbarian queen. And if they can't even use the excuse that, which I think they did, was well, we're sticking closer to the actual real Red Sonia book. Bullshit! It's very, very clearly stated that uh, even in a chainmail shirt with a uh, a scarf cinched around her waist, you could not help but notice her huge cans. Yeah, it's very yeah. explicitly stated that that yeah. no chainmail shirt could hide those suckers. Mm -hmm. No, that's one reason I liked Red Sonia was because when I, even as a little girl, when I saw Red Sonia, because my dad would be like, oh, hot chick when we'd be in the comic book store and I'd be like, yeah. 
<laughs> but even in the um, the show Angel in the second season, they did an homage on the final t- the season enders when they went to where Lorne was from, the demon world. They put Cordelia in the Red Sonia outfit. Really? She wore they the did? chain mail bra and bikini. Go look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys can look it up. She wears a gold one and a silver one. Dude. Yeah, uh, she doesn't fight or anything. They they're worshiping her uh, as a, a vessel because she has the precognition. But yeah, Charisma Carpenter looks fucking hot in the the chainmail bikini and uh, loincloth. It, it's gorgeous. Cool. No, I didn't. I don't think I saw that episode. Of course. Uh... Angel, I've only seen in sporadic episodes. I haven't seen it uh, oh, there in we go. order. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, oh did you find it? The... Uh, I can't. No, I think that's something else. Mm. No, I think that was it. But those look like seashells. Um. Well. I think that's the closest we're going to get. Yeah, I'll keep looking. Uh, if you guys ever get a chance, or Kat, if you get a <laughs> chance, I highly recommend watching Angel. Season three and season four really suck, but there we the, go. First, the first two and the fifth season are pretty epic. Well, I have to admit the, uh, the puppet episode was hysterical. Oh my god, that had me fucking dying. It's a good episode. I think that's one of the few shows where the spinoff actually uh, does be- like is better, at least in my opinion, than mm-hmm. the show it came from. I thought Angel was way superior yeah, to a Buffy. Well, you know, I it, agree. Was an, it was an adult show. It wasn't a teeny bopper love story show. It was actually like, uh, a, it was noir. It was vampire noir, but it wasn't mm-hmm. like stupid, sparkly vampire romantic noir. It was like, no, we're fighting like uh, demon infested lawyers. Uh, I thought that was a great uh, way to show how scummy lawyers are. They all sold their soul to the devil. Well, well I'll admit, I, once it got to the, uh, was it Wolfram and Hart um, mm-hmm. stories, I'm watching this going, somebody played Masquerade. Somebody totally played Masquerade and this is their game. <laughs> and I loved every second of it. Well, the fifth season, they actually have assassins show up, and it's straight out of Masquerade. They're mm-hmm. cyborg assassins. I was like, "This, we're playing some White Wolf here in this episode. This is amazing." Yeah, it was. I was great. It was actually very good writing, very good entertainment. Um, I have to say, that's the first and only time I will accept. And even applauded killing a character, but not really. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, um, what was her name? Um, God, I can't even remember what the character's name. Fred. Fred. Uh, oh, yeah. That's the fifth season when she becomes Illyria. Because the suddenly it's like, shit, this actress has range. Yeah. I, I can't tell that this is the same person and it's strictly because of how good the actress is. Um, where, uh, for those of you who've never seen it, uh, a uh, you know, beloved character gets killed and a uh, demon takes over her body. And uh, The it, cutesy nerd girl that everyone had a crush on eats it. Yeah. And it was genius. It was the best thing they could have done to that character because, quite frankly, she was a... Uh, um, uh, she was a cul-de-sac. <laughs> she was getting stale. Her character yeah. was getting stale. Mm-hmm. She was a I, discount I was, willow. Yeah, yeah, that's what she had become. Uh, I was really sad that they did not go through with season six because I was like, this is going to be great with Illyria on the team. Mm-hmm. And then I, I don't know why they lost the show. It probably had something to do with Joss Whedon. I mean... Oh, you know why they lost the show? Because of season four. Because Joss Whedon had his temper tantrum over Charisma Carpenter getting pregnant. He rewrote the entire season to make her a pedophile and a demon. Oh. She she sleeps with Angel's son because they think the world's going to end. And then she gets pregnant. 
and she becomes evil because she's pregnant with a demon and then gives birth to the demon and the demon is uh brainwashes everybody into thinking it's perfect it was basically joss whedon's way of saying hey charisma this is what i think about you getting pregnant you being a catholic and you keeping your baby that whole season was a fuck you to her and he drove that show into the ground because he was pissed she would not abort her baby well go, we if you go back and watch season, he's a horrible fucking human and after he had his temper tantrum and they did the fifth season and they brought in James Marsters as Spike and the season was like, it was just as good as season one. The, the network was just like, no, we're not taking this risk again and cut the show. Jeez. He drove his own show into the ground, fucked everybody over on that set, promised Charisma Carpenter he wouldn't kill her off and then killed her off in the most horrible fashion because she was a pregnant Catholic and would not abort her baby. Well, you know, he is a male feminist, so it fits the profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, did you read her interview where he asked yeah. her, what are you going to, so what are we going to do about your situation? She was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh yeah. That's the chain mail that she's wearing in the book. Well, that's interesting that that's the chain mail. This is actually somebody's art. Uh, artwork from DeviantArt that did, they did a long time ago. This oh, isn't really? quite accurate, but I brought this up because somebody said, isn't uh, Red Sonia originally a, a sky pirate? No. Uh, she is uh, she is a swashbuckler type uh, who basically did not want to live the life of a woman uh, and left. Just decided she was going to live her life her way. And she sailed the seas and uh, lived as a pirate and raised a lot of hell. And the story that you get her in is during an invasion of Constantinople, I believe, I could be wrong, by the Ottoman Empire. And she wants to kill the Sultan. And she is dressed in a chainmail shirt, a pair of, uh, I think, uh, baggy leather pants, uh, sailor boots. She has a red uh, scarf cinched around her waist and a chainmail tunic. And she carries a musket and a blade. And the Sonya that you get in the comics is weak sauce compared to this character. Mm -hmm. This character drinks hard, fucks hard, and kills hard and loves every moment of it. Nice. She, she acts more like a biker than, you know, this... Uh, pure maiden uh, avenging the rape of women. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is Sonia with a Y, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, that tunic that she's wearing looks almost like the one in the comic book, the, but the tunic actually goes down her arms too, mm -hmm. the chain mail. So, but I like that one. She's, that chick's hot. Yeah, I, I, You should try reading her story. I believe it's called The Shadow of the Vulture. Okay. The is the Red Vulture. Nails Valeria? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We are being asked by Dark Stranger to cover the new Scooby Doo, Doo show called Mystery Incorporated next week. I had no idea such a thing existed. Me neither. Why do you inflict such things on us? It's probably woke garbage. On the other hand, I know, Ishii, you haven't seen the Scooby Doo movie, which is actually very hilarious. Are you talking about the one with Sarah Michelle Gellar? Yes. Okay, yeah, that movie's actually really funny. It had no business being good. No, no well, you know, it had Rowan good. Atkinson in it. Mm -hmm. It had I, Rowan Atkinson. Freddie Prince Jr. playing himself. Mm -hmm. Matthew Lillard actually yeah. does a fantastic job as Scooby. And I was yes. very surprised about Linda Cardellini able to nail Velma's nasally voice. Yes. Yeah, that, that movie really, you're right, had no business being good. And no. it was good. I and, took my and, dad to see that for Father's Day because he loved Scooby-Doo. And even though I knew it was coming, uh, spoiler alert, I was still on the floor laughing when it turned out that Scrappy was the villain. Oh, it's like, fuck yeah, somebody knew. <laughs> somebody I love listened. That. <laughs> Everybody. My dad started snort laughing when it was <laughs> revealed. 
you know, one day back in the days of college, in the early days of the internet, when uh, it was the Wild West and you never really knew what the hell you were going to find, I used to do random searches just to see what I could come up with. And once I did one on Scooby-Doo, and I came up with a treasure trove of information about Scooby-Doo, I know more about that show than I have any business knowing about Scooby-Doo. Do you know as much as you know about boobs? I No, I've never pressed my face in between two Scooby-Doos and spent <laughs> hours there. Um, no, I have not sit just watching my wife's bouncy Scooby-Doos around the... <laughs> never done that. Does not compare. Does not compare. But... Uh, I will say one thing I universally found on all Scooby-Doo sites was a deep loathing and hatred of Scrappy-Doo. Yes. Down to there were entire uh, ta like tags that you could put on your website with you know the circle and the stripe through uh, Scrappy and you know kill Scrappy and <laughs> well, you know, Scrappy is not canon. Those episodes don't count. <laughs> Oh yeah, that there there are fans out there who who firmly stand by Scrappy is not canon. <laughs> hey, did you see Winged Yaga's comment? There was a theory that Joss Whedon added Black Widow getting a hysterectomy because he was pissed about his actresses getting pregnant because Scarlett Johansson was pregnant at the time. That makes sense. I don't doubt it. I don't yeah, doubt after it what he least. did to Charisma Carpenter. Well, you know, he was raised by a hardcore rad fem, a radical feminist. He said so himself. And boy, he acts like one. Yeah. You know, he hates women and he hates uh, life. He's and he hates the idea of women producing life. <laughs> Never Such thought I'd say this, talent. but he makes Tom King look like a fine, upstanding human being who, you know, loves the fairer sex. <laughs> and his Ooh. hatred of boobs, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck Tom King. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, totally fuck him. But in comparison, oh God, you know what? I gotta, you know, I gotta agree. I mean, as much I loathe Tom King so much, but yeah, Joss Whedon makes him look like a saint. Mm -hmm. Well, as far as I can tell, all Tom King really is is a compulsive liar who's managed to con people into giving jobs. Yeah, I, I swear, just about everything he says is a lie. For instance, he keeps talking about this imaginary wife and kid. Never seen him wear a wedding ring. Nope. Uh, do you remember when he had his wife all of a sudden come to his defense on Twitter saying, here's pictures of him when he was in, I forget, fucking Iraq or Afghanistan? Yeah. No, I yeah. didn't hear about that. But yet, if you look at the job description he supposedly had with the CIA, he would have never been there. Ever. The job he had would never have put him there. He's a terrible liar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, he made know, it sound like he was doing James Bond shit, but wasn't he just like rubbing shoulders with rich people? Yeah, his job apparently was to sit on airplanes next to people and talk to them and go to parties and talk to people. And, you know, it was just he's a rich kid, had ties to Hollywood. That's it. If he even really did the job. Mm hmm. But yeah, the number of things he's done that are so shady, that I, I, I kind of even doubt he really did CIA work. And that and you can't keep his story straight. I was going to say, for somebody who if had all these amazing stories, he can't write for shit. Exactly. I'm sorry, well, I'm reading the comments. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you read all of his stories... The men are miserable and depressed and their their wives or their girlfriends have to be the ones to stand up and take care of business because their men are so depressed and weak. He did it with Vision first before he did it to Batman. His mm -hmm. Vision run was, I like, I was like, no wonder everybody's suicidal in this book. This book is depressing and awful. Did it to Mr. Miracle, too. He fucking well, ruined Scott Free and Big Barda. Well, he said in an interview that he enjoys destroying characters. Dude, what is up with him and Brian Michael Bendis? Are they so fucking miserable that they have to take it out 
on these characters that have been around forever and beloved. Yes. <laughs> well, evil cannot well, that's create. It can only destroy. Yeah. Well, Brian Michael Bendis said that one of his favorite things to do was to destroy characters and teams. He loved doing Avengers Disassembled and watching the fans go batshit. He said it gave him great joy. And he loved doing X-Men Disassembled with uh, M-Day and all that shit. Well, like, at least he put it in the title. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, I, I think the problem right now is that comics have become so um, insular that the, the people they're hiring are all friends of friends of friends or they're, uh, you know, we've hired this girl from the university to make us hip. Yeah. And that I, none of them have any new ideas. None of them have any idea about creativity. Just fuck them <laughs> really seriously when i went to uh oh, was it tc uh comics and games off wearing road uh, i went with my nephew and uh i i went to the dollar bin you know just i wanted to see and it was all the shit from 2014 onward because none of that stuff's selling mm. it, it made yeah. me sad because I was like, I have no interest in even looking for independent back issues from indie companies anymore. Like, I just walked away and I went to the Warhammer section and camped out. Uh, but on a good note, Ishi, I just want, because this goes to your book, they had an entire rack filled with the original Masters rack. of the Universe and She Ra oh, action nice. figures. And the women had boobs and yes, cleavage it was nice. great. they look like women is what you're saying yes steve pointed out to me he's like dude you got to tell ishi about this i was like oh my god i couldn't believe it and I, if i had the 200 dollars to buy the entire set i would have bought it right there oh but and, i don't and have i must <laughs> continually remind the audience this when when we talk about boobs of steel and the fact that these characters with big boobs are all being written out and erased it's not just about the breasts it's really an overall reflective war on womanhood itself mm -hmm. yes they want to completely eradicate the concept of female it's that simple I mean, there were all those feminists in the 60s and 70s who basically all tried to be men. And they went on and on and on about gender not existing, and here we are today. And the uh, one of the most famous feminist sci-fi writers of that era, Joanna Russ, even wrote a book where in the future, feminists wage war against men. And they eventually win by eradicating gender, by confusing language and changing its meaning until gender becomes utterly indiscernible and meaningless. And then they kill off all men with a, a plague so that all that's left are mannish women. Ew. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I I'm think that's sorry. the best reaction. <laughs> I, I'm too straight for that. I could not eat out Vag. Like, no, no, I would rather go down fighting for my man. Like, yes, ugh. no offense to any lesbians. <laughs> Just I was saying like this whole thing where like there would be nothing but butch men or butch women left. Like, why yeah. has it always got to be butch women, too? I, you can because be a fucking womanhood. tomboy. And OK, cat is the perfect women. They do. Kat's the perfect example of a woman who looks very womanly. And I mean very womanly. Thank you. But <laughs> still can, like, she can build stuff. She She's like the person I would call and be like, hey, my electricity is on the fritz and I don't want to pay for an electrician. Can you come check my shit out? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I, I don't understand why... Oh, I get so frustrated that I can't get my words straight. It just fucking uh, angers me. I'm with you. Uh, it, it's one of those things where I've learned that uh, either I have to tamp it down really, really far and just not feel, or 
I wind up in the same state that you are where I lose the ability to speak because it gets me so angry. <laughs> it really gets me angry because I'm worried about my son. You know I, what? Okay, you have a more valid reason to be angry. I, mean, I just have myself. You have a young man you're rearing. You know, that I I actually, I would fear for him, except he has you as a mom. So I know you put him on the right path, but I also know the uh, uphill battle you have. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I worry. He, <laughs> my son is a cis white male. Uh, yeah. At least I think he's a cis white. I know he's a white male, but well, no, he likes the ladies. I see him blush. So. Uh, and I don't, if, if he was not a cis white male, if he was gay, I would not care. What I care about is the fact that people are going to tell him is he's a piece of shit for being a male. Yeah. I'm like, my son is not a piece of shit. And if you want to say that to his face, you're not going to be breathing anymore because I will most likely throat punch your ass for saying that to my kid. I do not care if I go to prison. <laughs> I see you in danger of seeing red, and the next thing you know, you wake up in a jail cell. So, yeah, so, Steve worries about that too. <laughs> uh, just, just completely aside before I take this image off the screen, I just got to say, uh, Janelle is completely right about the handyman stuff, about cat <laughs> fixing stuff and building stuff and taking care of things like installing doorknobs. And uh, I mean, well, you built me my outdoor office. Yeah, but. You got it. You got to understand from my perspective, being able to sit down with my laptop, I'm writing and I look up and she's working on something outside in the back. And you got to imagine what this looks like when she's swinging a hammer. <laughs> I mean, those things when she is swinging a hammer in a tank top is just glorious. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Or you have like to if, make an animation of that is she? You have to oh do it God. now. <laughs> or, or another one is if she's got a hacksaw and she's sawing the wood again. In a tank top, it's glorious. <laughs> My saying. God, what would you do if she had a jackhammer? I'd probably jizz my pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have a jackhammer. I have anything mine. that would make it jiggle. <laughs> I have a table saw. <laughs> Ooh. I'm sorry, now I just have images of Cat with this hammer and just this awesome pendulum swing. I have breath. a jitterbug sander. <laughs> just bounce, behave, bounce. Behave. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, I'm glad that we could wind the night down getting yeah. back to breasts. Like, mm -hmm. after Dr. Strange. <laughs> After, after some, some sad stuff, some serious stuff, you can you can bring it to, to something that's nice and warm and comforting. Yes. Just just make sure your son reads Starship Troopers. That should set that should make sure he'll be fine. We uh, we plan on it. This this summer is packed with movies and books, not not as many video games. We told him that he has to watch one uh, in his terms classic movie that we have <laughs> classic, That's considered classic for him <laughs> big trouble in little china which we're actually going to have him watch excellent good uh, film labyrinth is another classic he's like i don't want to watch your old films we're like they're not old forgetting yet now we're old <laughs> He hasn't seen Labyrinth yet, although, you know, it, it was a weird realization that we live in, an, in a time where there are college students who have not known a world without the Matrix. Are you serious? Oh. Yeah, that was 20 years ago. Oh. Okay, wait, wait. So he's bitching about old films, but I don't recall our generation having that problem. No, we loved old films. Yeah, what the hell? I hey I don't know this this is you've met my son do you know how he is <laughs> he uh he's not one for sitting through movies very often and if he's had to sit through a movie a lot of times it's been at school and it's been like some dumbass cartoon that uh. he's not really into that he likes his educational shows um in fact he's become so jaded that his teacher put on Spy Kids. 
And he walked out of the room to go read. And we were like, Chris, no, 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 no. You want to watch Spy Kids? You want to watch Spy Kids? He didn't realize <laughs> that it was a cool movie about kids with gadgets. I was like, it's the kids version of James Bond. So. And come on, it's Antonio Banderas. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Robert Rodriguez. Though sometimes mm -hmm. I have a problem with Robert Rodriguez. Sometimes he can get a bit weird. But yeah, I mean, I he went back and I guess watched the second half and now wants to watch the whole thing. But he's been so inundated with just like crappy stuff that he doesn't want to sit down. We have to like sit him down and be like, you are watching this film with us. Mm -hmm. So... So, but so yeah, like, Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, all the good nice. shit. Nice. So what if you like sat him in, in front of like Escape from New York? Because he's like, oh, it's old. No, I think he'd like Escape from New York. Okay. Yeah, we really do. Actually, I forgot to tell you guys, we are going to show him Starship Troopers. We are just going to fast forward through the sexy bits and cover his eyes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, luckily it's not too bad but no, yeah. there's only a couple of there's the shower scene and then there's the scene where dizzy and rico get it on like i you know we were like do you think he's gonna get upset about people getting their limbs hacked off and we're like nah it's too cartoonish you know what's interesting <laughs> about that film is the shower scene though mm -hmm. is shot completely desexualized it mm -hmm. is not a hot scene whatsoever no it oh, no really is just bodies which is interesting because you, you know, usually people would a director would you know use that to get some cheap thrills, and it absolutely is not. It's like the nudity in RoboCop. Oh yeah. It just it's there. It just flies by. You don't even. Oh yeah, there's the boobs. Okay. <laughs> I wish that he was old enough to see RoboCop because we know he's gonna love that movie because of its humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody actually suggested it, but uh, uh, you know, you don't think he's old enough? That's perfectly fine. How I know. old is he? Oh. He's 11. He's going to be 12. You know, I have to remember, he's not five anymore. And I saw RoboCop when it first came out. And the only scene that freaked me out was when the guy got, like, hit by the toxic waste. And then <laughs> when, Kirk, when Smith runs him over, he just, like, turns into sludge. That was the only scene that freaked me out. Oh, and that, speaking of, did you know yeah. that when they put the makeup on that guy, they didn't tell Ray Wise they put the makeup on him. So when he jumps on him and yells, help me, Ray Wise was really freaking out and saying, get off me, man, and ran away. <laughs> okay, that's funny. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? I think Chris can handle RoboCop. You know what would scar him for life, though, is never-ending story. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I can't I even, I, I can't even there. I can't even talk about that one scene. <laughs> People I'm 43 years old and I still fast forward through the Artax scene. I can't, yeah. I can't, I fast forward to that whole scene. I can't do it. Nope. Just, yeah. Just, uh, hit, hits too much in the feels. Oh, Although again, oh. I was so happy. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I was so happy when I first read the book, when it came up to that scene, I'm like, Oh God, here it is. You know? And I'm, I'm like at school. So I'm like, I don't want anybody to see me cry. And I'm reading that scene. It's like, wait, our text talks, the talking horse. And the fact that he talks actually made it not bad or not um, gut wrenching. Um, in fact, it actually was kind of goofy. Especially so, if you start imagining it like the Mr. Ed voice. It's okay, Atreyu. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, he, he did say, you know, I'm okay, you know, I'm okay, Atreyu. My my suffering's ending. And it's like, no, you can still live. It's like, no, I don't want to live. I want to die. Goodbye, friend. I'm with like, JC. Oh, this will scar anybody. Return to Oz. Oh, are you kidding me? We I watched that with Chris. He liked it. Oh, good. Yeah, it's the post-apocalyptic uh, Wizard of Oz. That's yes. the best one. <laughs> the wheelers, man. Those things gave oh. me the piss willies when I was a kid. They were awesome. I love TikTok. I me too. Do. He's my I favorite. I put him into one of my comics. <laughs> oh, by the way, everyone, uh, speaking of discords, the link is in the description, along with a link to all my books here, which you should own. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and thank you, Dark Stranger. Yeah. I haven't seen yes, yes, Princess Mombi. Um, Jean Marsh. Jean, yes. Jean Marsh played Princess Mombi. Wasn't she also the mom in Willow, the evil queen? Yes, and yes, she yeah. was. She was Bad Morda. Yep. That's Jean a good Marsh movie, too, amazing. and incredibly underrated. And that's probably mm -hmm. going to. I think we're going to make Chris sit down and watch good fantasy films. 
I think that's the big one for us because he thinks fantasy is shit, which I've complained about several times on the show. And we're going to sit him down and be like, no, this is fantasy. Yeah. Modern day fantasy, unfortunately, at least, a you know, mainstream fantasy is shit. You know, this is good stuff. Yeah. He doesn't have the attention span for Lord of the Rings yet, but we are pretty sure once he's, you know, more able to sit down through a movie, he's going to love it. That's serious fantasy. That's not like the fantasy we have today. Yeah. Uh, Iron Cast Knight suggests Excalibur. <laughs> That's a fantastic film, especially Ellen Mirren as mm -hmm. uh, Morgana. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> She was so hot when she was younger, but she's yes. actually aged into a very handsome woman. Mm -hmm. You know, the armor she wears where it's um, basically, you know, a form fitting caress of her boobs. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that plate. Apparently the armor still has that over his fireplace. Does he? Yeah. <laughs> He's very proud of that. <laughs> okay. That's funny. <laughs> he took that one home and put it over his fireplace. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me, we are also, speaking of uh, women in plate, we are actually going to show him Conan the Barbarian. We think he's going to like that one, too. That is such a good film. That's yes. actually one of my favorites. Yes. And yeah. I'm, a, I'm not really a fantasy film. I don't really like fantasy myself, but I love uh, that film. Are you okay with the sexy time scenes? We'll just fast forward. The, the, okay. One of us can slap our hands over his eyes, and the other person can just go to the next scene. <laughs> what are you going to well, do with the orgy? Parents that's what my parents did for me when I watched Conan the Barbarian for the first time. They let me watch James Earl Jones get his head hacked off, but I wasn't allowed to watch the orgy. <laughs> <laughs> they even, when the orgy part was over and they were eating the soup with the human body parts in it, and, you know, people still have their tits out, they let me watch mm -hmm. that too. It was just I wasn't allowed to watch Sexy Time. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> my parents had... My parents had a very strange way of uh, raising me when it came to movies. I mean, I was allowed to watch Aliens when it first came out, and that movie scared the shit out of me, but it was so good. You know, for me, it I look back on my childhood and what I was exposed to. Now, I saw Conan at um, seven or eight all in all its glory. Uh, in fact, a lot of these films that we've brought up, I saw at age seven and I was actually okay with it. Mom knew what it was. She was sitting in the room with me. So, you know, that's fine. Um, but at that age, uh, my best friend and I rented cool world at the video store because we're like, Oh, this will be like Roger rabbit. And we went into you know, her room to watch it. And both of us, when we were done, were like, we just saw something we shouldn't see. And we both, without saying a word, decided we weren't going to bring it up to her parents because we were at her parents' house. And we were both like, we're never speaking of this again. <laughs> uh, and it's just interesting how context is everything in what you are exposed to. <laughs> now, I actually enjoy Cool World now, but as a kid, it's like, oh, I shouldn't have seen this. <laughs> I actually liked Cool World. I'm sad that we didn't get the Cool World we were supposed to. I agree. Yes. Um, but still, the, the animated scenes and that dark, seedy world, I really like that. Mm -hmm. That was neat. It Honestly, if they just hadn't done the stupid fucking ending... Like, yes. I think the movie would have been okay. I agree. The uh, the all is full of love ending. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the whole. I mean, Brad Pitt and Gabriel Byrne signed on for a different movie, and then they got Kim Basinger, and she didn't like the ending, and she didn't like being evil, so they rewrote really? the whole. That... Yeah. That was the uh, okay. That's annoying. I didn't know that. Yeah. Apparently, it was supposed to end very dark. Well, like any of um, uh, Bashke's films, you know, like there's a little bit of silver lining, but shit's bad. Uh, it was supposed to kind of end like that. And that's because Gabriel Byrne, I, after seeing a lot of his films as I got older, I was very confused why he was in Cool World. And then I read an article about it. Him and Brad Pitt had signed up for a very dark film. 
and it turned into Cool World. And that dark film is very apparent while they were still in Cool World. <laughs> yes, I, that's why that was my favorite parts of the film. I was like, yeah. holy shit, I want to go live there. <laughs> This place is fucked up. It's great. That yeah. had a great soundtrack. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Wasn't it like Lords of Acid and um Lords of Acid, Thrill Kill Cult, yeah, Thrill Kill Ministry. Cult. Uh here we go. Yeah, like there you go. <laughs> did we uh did we lose somebody or uh oh no I'm here. Okay. okay. No, I'm sorry. I was watching Holly grab her boobs. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of the few films that had just one killer soundtrack is in terms of industrial and electronic music. Here we go. It had oh, Bowie. There you David go. David Bowie, Electronic, Ministry, um, My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult, uh, Sex on Wheels, Mindless, I don't know who that is, um, Let's see. Brian Eno. Eh, who cares? Uh, another Thrill Kill Cult. Moby. Two of them. Uh, the Cult. Future Sound of London. Thompson Twins. And there was going to be a Frontline Assembly and a Leather Strip track, but they got cut. Aww. Aww. Which tracks are, do we know? I don't know which one from Frontline Assembly, but I know that uh, for Leather Strip, it was the song Steel. I don't think I've heard that one. It's one of the older ones. It's a good song, though. There was that window in the 90s where movies had industrial soundtracks. And it was only yeah. like two years. It was mm -hmm. 93 to 95. Because I think the last industrial soundtrack movie was Mortal Kombat. But that's what it, that was the movie that introduced me to industrial. And um, well, good. I guess you'd say Cool World did too. But I didn't realize I wasn't old enough to go. Um, or my parents wouldn't take me to record stores. It was when I was in high school. Then I could finally go and pick up like KMFDM and you know Fear Factory. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was such yeah a good something. Uh, yeah, what it was was industrial was just about there. There was this wonderful time in the '90s in which there was no one scene. It was just called alternative. Do you remember that? Yes. But it was just nobody. It wasn't grunge. It wasn't. It was. I like alternative, and alternative meant everything from like Jane's Addiction to uh, Primus to like Frontline Assembly, Nine Inch Nails, mm -hmm. just across the board. It was all just in a mix. And it was supposed Grunge to be happened. an answer to New Wave. Like everybody was kind yeah. of over just New Wave and pop. If I remember, that's what the alternative scene was. Yeah. And then Grunge broke and all that went bye-bye. And although grunge did contribute a lot of good things, I was very bitter at the time. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I never could get into grunge. Like I, when I was growing up, there was always, I always was attracted to electronic music or heavy metal, but I didn't know what it was. And that's why I said Mortal Kombat was like, oh, okay, this is what I've been looking for this whole time. Uh, but I could like everybody was all into Nirvana and Pearl Jam and shit, and I'm like, yeah, that's Pearl just not Jam. my scene. Mm. Like, I I need some metal and I need electronic music and I need it smushed together in a great cacophony of sound. Yeah, there was this period in time where suddenly, like, you turned on K Rock or I guess what it would be a KGB for you, mm -hmm. and it was like Gin Blossoms, the Cranberries, the. <laughs> Lisa Loeb's like, Jesus Christ, just shut me, shut, just shoot me right now. He's... <laughs> uh, with me, it was uh, everyone in my class was listening to Power 106. So, oh, the, got, the Baker Brothers, the Baker Brothers. Uh, everybody was listening to Jam and Z90 for me, the rap station. Yep, <laughs> at my high school, Jam and Z90. Or 99 or 93.9. The only two good stations, or I'm sorry, three, was Rock 105.3, 91X, and 92.5 The Flash. Oh, Fair Maiden, yes. <laughs> She's in the house. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while, Fair Maiden. You know, I would like her to come on a show with us sometime if she can. Do you think That'd you could, nice. Fair Maiden? I know that your phone's a little weird, but we'd love to have you on. Yeah. 
I know that it works because I've interviewed you. But yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah. It'd be fun to to talk to Fair Maiden. Actually, I want to talk to everyone at one point, just to talk to people and chat. It's always so fun to like hear their stories. It makes me happy. I'd like to do a thing where I could bring a lot of people on and like cycle through it and give everyone like 15 minutes, but I think it would be so hard to manage. And I'm afraid if I started doing that again, I'd inevitably piss people off because somebody would get cut off or wouldn't get included. And I know mm -hmm. that I would then be the dick. Well, if you make that, you, we did that before, like last year, um, we had, oh, what's his name? What Dungeon bring... Delver. I can't remember his real name. Bill, right? Dungeon Delver? Yeah. I think it's yeah, Bill, yeah. We had him and a couple of other people on. Oh, JC, who we still need to bring back. JC was great. You yes. still want to pick his brain about comics. Yes, actually, I, I follow him like a stalker on Instagram. <laughs> Because his art is so good. So, like, once a day, I'll flip on Instagram to see if he's put anything new up. He's been producing a lot, actually. Yeah, you know that, he has. Uh, you know that picture he did of, uh, of me, the alien, at the keyboard with a rat next to me? Mm -hmm. You've seen that. We have that framed. Yeah, it's actually beside my bed. I mm -hmm. actually have it framed and up next to the bed. And for everyone out there, JEC, anything you want, he'll, he'll draw it for 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, that, that's an incredible deal. Mm. That, it is 50 bucks, right, JEC? I hope I got it right. That's a steal. Most artists at least start at 100. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Honestly, JEC, I think you should be charging 100 because your art is that awesome. I, but I think it's cool that you're charging 50. But I'm just saying your, your artwork is definitely 100 or more. And Mark, I listen to Iron Maiden, Metallica, Megadeth, and uh, Pantera. Somebody was asking what metal I listen to. Nice. You know, I, as a, a, a grandiose idea, I like metal. But when I actually get down to it, I find there's very few of it that I actually like like enough to put on a playlist. I'll, if it's on the radio, there are certain things I'm like, yeah, I like that. But actually to own, there's very few, I'm very picky, unfortunately. You I'm like picky Dio. About, I do like Dio. I love Rainbow in the Dark. <laughs> you guys are going to totally kill me. I have never heard Dio. You know, the first time I heard of Dio, fucking JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> Really? I had no clue the guy existed. Oh, wow. Um, I know. I feel stupid now. I'm like, I, I say that I listen to metal. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Wow. I failed somewhere. Uh, no, it's just like one of those weird, weird ass, you know, hiccups in reality where for some odd reason you never came across him before. But uh, no, I, okay. Specifically, look up Dio Rainbow in the Dark. Watch the video. You have to watch the video. It is so amazing and epic and beautiful. And and just I I'm just gonna leave it there. But you you, you gotta watch the video. And that's what sold me on it. Because when okay, there's lightning, have, it always gets me down. Yes. I have queued it up in YouTube for after the show. Excellent. <laughs> so I can watch it. Because I I like Judas Priest. I mean, I know this is a very common song for people to like from Judas Priest. I just love the song Turbo Lover. I think it's because the video. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I just like, oh, man. Okay, That's I'll a... admit it. I actually hadn't heard any priest until I found out that Halford lived in uh, Hillcrest. So then it's like, oh, well, if he's local, I got to listen. <laughs> Oh, that's that explains why in the 90s he was always at music festivals with um oh shit, what was his side band? He had a second band. Fight. Not Mr. Bungle. That was the oh, guy from think, Faith uh, No More. Uh, fight, right? I think so, yeah. He was always at music festivals in the mid to late uh, mid to late nineties, because I was running around with the San Diego uh, indie music scene at the time frame. So I was always at those festivals and he was there. And now I know why. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah, he's local. Oh God, Holy Diver. God, how could I forget Holy Diver? That song is amazing. That's another Devo song you got to check out. Devo, Dio, sorry. Devo. <laughs> sorry. I was like, Devo? <laughs> I'm talking too fast. No, I'm the one that loves Devo. <laughs> I'm talking too fast. And I'm probably a little buzzed. You were the one I subjected to. Yes, you are. I forced Devo upon well, you. Well, I was given a mixtape of Devo by uh, my uh, best friend in high school brother. And I didn't listen to it until Ishii said, oh, hey, Devo. It's like, oh, this is actually good. <laughs> so and then you said, well, some of it's actually good. And I said, no, all of it is. And you said, well, some of it's actually good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picky. I'm very picky. I'm extremely picky. But hey, I am so picky. I have not purchased an actual album in over a decade because I rather would just pick and choose the songs that I like. <laughs> but hey, you liked Girl You Want Enough to have it in the wedding. So. Yes, that's true. Yes. So, so that was... That was right after I, I kissed the bride. Yeah, we played Girl, Girl You Want. Oh, that's so cute. Yes, the uh, the uh, wedding march was um, the uh, theme from uh, Ghost in the Shell, the movie. And Which the, actually the lyrics are about a beautiful bride on her wedding day. Yes. And the making of the cyborg song, the lyrics are about a bride. Yeah, I thought that, didn't they say that the soundtrack was supposed to be based on traditional bridal music, like the yeah. entire soundtrack? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Because, okay, yeah. That, I would love to deep dive a show on Ghost Hence in the Shell you. one night. Oh, I'm your person for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, very much so. By the way, Fair Maiden White, while I don't think Devo's ever covered Dio, have you ever heard Devo's cover of Head Like a Hole? It is so weird. <laughs> it is beautifully weird. You can find it on YouTube. That's amazing. I did not know they did that. Oh, I can't wait. So Rainbow uh, in the Dark and then Devo had like a whole, that's going to sound so weird. <laughs> I recall that uh, Kurt, uh, uh, Trent Reznor's comment was, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> he said it, was, it was certainly weird. <laughs> he has the best comments on people that uh, do covers of his songs. I well, mean. yeah, the bit about... Uh, Johnny Cash. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, Janelle, did you, uh, what did you think of the album that uh, Dave Mustaine had Trent Reznor produce, which was Symphony of Destruction? I fucking love that album. Yeah. Wasn't that a great album? I think that's their best album. I did not know Reznor produced that, but yeah. holy shit. Now I know why. I think uh, that is, in my opinion, their best album. And uh, there's even a, um, apparently uh, the single, I used to have this till the house fire, where Reznor did a remix of that song that is just amazing. Of Symphony of Destruction? Holy yeah. shit. Okay. But I got to find that now, too. <laughs> but we actually had Chris listen to that album when we drove all the way to Vegas last year. And he was like, I could see him in the back. His head was kind of bobbing. I was like, okay, we got a Megadeth fan in the house. Nice. Yes. I always like the song Sweating Bullets, where yeah. he's schizophrenic. Hey, hello, me. It's me again. Okay. You want to laugh? Look up that song on Beavis and Butthead. Oh, shit. I because the video, saw that episode. Have you seen the video? Uh, no, I have not. It Mustaine's in a, a, a sane asylum, and he mm -hmm. looks in a mirror, and it's him looking back, and slowly more and more of him show up in the room, and there are more Dave Mustaines all in the room singing and talking to each other. Mm -hmm. And Beavis and Bud had to get into an argument about which one of them is Dave Mustaine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of Beavis and Butthead, we are also introducing Chris to Beavis and Butthead this Good. summer. <laughs> Oh, yeah. good. Very yeah. good. I would have to say, you know, sometimes when uh, the modern age just is too goddamn annoying, we'll put on just a long playlist of uh, all their videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even matter if you like the song or not. It, it's like a time machine. It's like, oh, I remember when people laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when music didn't all sound the same and sampled from the same three songs. 
Oh, I I feel so sorry for this generation. They don't understand what good music is. Uh, there's a sushi restaurant that we would go to. Great food, but whoever chose their music just needed to be shot, quite frankly, because it was all awful. And we realized that we could not tell when one song ended and the next one began. And then, so we started playing a game of, okay, is this a real person or is this just a robot singing through a vocoder, <laughs> uh, whatever words that it's been taught? Is this, you know, the songs by Siri, basically. And we came to a conclusion one day that they were all songs generated by a computer with vocals through a vocoder. <laughs> Oh, dang. Not a single one of them was an actual live person. Well, I know. I think they actually had singers. It's just they all sounded like they were, they all came out of the demo button. No, there was a, there's, I would say 50 to 75% of them were not real people. They were actual computers. And it's because you listen to the lyrics and it's completely nonsensical. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, the, the, the lyrics all sounded like they came out of a content folder. I will have to admit the nonsensical nature of the uh, lyrics were kind of odd. Mm hmm Well, you know, there's lots of things like, uh, you know, mm -hmm, uh, you know, you gotta love your man. And then it would say something really odd that rhymed with man. Like, what? I like, okay, for, for uh, I'm, I'm going to show how I'm odd here. There's a band that I do enjoy. It's called America, and it's from what, 60s, yeah. 70s? Yeah, uh, America is from the 60s. And the great thing about America is that none of their songs make sense. They just, they, they would like have a message or two that they wanted to convey in the song. But other than that one line or those two lines, the words would make no sense. It's just whatever rhymed together. Um, uh, you know, like, uh, there's one song where, uh, the, the song is uh, called Ventura Highway. I'm sure a lot of people have heard it on all these stations. Um, but there's literally a so a line in the song where it says there's alligator lizards in the air. No, they're not high. It just sounded cool. So that's why they put it in there. That's how modern songs sound, except nothing sounds cool like alligator lizards in the air. It's just, you know, songs plucked from other top 40 songs that have come up, you know, in the years. I wonder how many people were listening to them and did acid and swore that they were like sending messages to them with their oh. weird ass lyrics. Probably a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, that particular song, it's uh, you know, where the days are longer, the nights are stronger than moonshine. I actually like that lyric. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Days are longer, but the nights are stronger than moonshine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, America's a fun band. Uh, but anyway, uh, Fair Maiden. Just, just posting that mm. 87 was a great year. You know, just about every year in the 80s was a great year for music and film. <laughs> oh, Seriously. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, Redneck likes Horse with No Name. Great song. Yes. The convention that I went to a couple of weeks ago, the, the sci-fi society that was there because it's 2022, their panel was the great sci-fi and horror movies of 1982. And they were basically, there was a bunch of young people there finding out about all these, they talked about the thing. They, t oh, they talked about you guys. I, when they were talking about the thing, I wish the two of you were there with me because they just gushed about John Carpenter's the thing and how, it was so misunderstood by critics and how it's that people have gone back and said it's one of the greatest horror sci-fi films ever made and probably John Carpenter's best film. Yeah. But they talked about Poltergeist and The Road Warrior. And you could see, like, my nephew had never seen any of these movies. And we were watching the wheels turn in his head because he was realizing, like, a shit ton of memes he had seen had come from these movies. And he's like, I want to see these films. But yeah, they, I just, they were talking about E.T. as well and how important, how uh, the, the, when um, the Academy Awards happened and Gandhi won over E.T. and got Best Director, the director came up and said, why didn't E.T. win this? It should have been E.T. 
I didn't wow. know that. Did you guys know that? No, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. They were really shocked that like they people at the Academy were upset because they were like, E.T. should have won. Whoever voted for Gandhi was stupid. So, but it was really neat to see. And it made Steve and I appreciate, like, we grew up at the right time. Because mm-hmm. we got all the good movies from the 80s and the 90s. And just seeing, but it was neat to see all these young kids in the crowd just being like, oh, wow, I want to see that. Well, my question is, okay, again, when we were growing up, we were exposed to all sorts of media. You know, it didn't matter. You were going to see all sorts of stuff. And what worries me is why is it that we seem to have had at least a generation, I don't know about the Zoomers, but the millennials don't seem to have actually gotten anything beyond a certain point. Mm -mm. That they're not familiar with what came before. And I don't know why that is. I mean, thank God my brother does, but that's because he had me and my father showing him movies. God damn it, you're stalker. You're not going to watch SpongeBob. We're going to get something good on. Yeah. Um, Yeah, exactly. uh, My brothers and sister-in-laws were lucky that they had parents that would actually show them like the good shit instead of just making them watch SpongeBob. I, I think, I honestly, I think it comes down to, I remember you guys had talked about before that there was a short window in the industry where the Gen Xers were finally let in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they were kicked out. And I think that's what did it. Instead of letting the Gen Xers come in and spread the joy and continue on, what you know because all of us wanted to continue on all the great shit we saw in the late 70s to the end of the 90s Mm -hmm. but the gen xers got cut out so it didn't continue instead the millennials were fed pablum to by the boomers who just wanted to keep everything cookie cutter the same you know pop music now stays the same all the movies that come out have like are just all the same all the cartoons are same all the way down to the animation mm-hmm. well the part it's... that really worries me is that we've had that before where you know the mainstream sucked we have had that happen before i would say definitely there was a, a period in the 90s where things started getting really tame and very boxed but we had this really vibrant counterculture you know, that's where Tarantino came from. We had all those great indie movies where all the indie rock came from when things started getting stale. There doesn't seem to be a viable counterculture right now. Well, no, it's because all the people that were counterculture have now become the ones that are in charge and they have all become what they hated. That's exactly what's happened. Frank Zappa mm-hmm. even predicted it, if you think about it. There was an interview yeah. he did where he said that the worst thing that happened to the music industry is when they got all these like hippie kids that came in and said, Oh, I know what all the cool hip music is. And mm-hmm. he said, you know, it used to be, you had the, the old Jewish guys who were in charge and the old Jewish guys were willing to try anything experimental because they were willing to have anybody do anything. And if it, you know, hit big, then they found a gold mine. If not, they went on to the next experimental thing. And he said it was the hippies that came from the universities that claimed that they knew all the cool shit were able to slowly take over. And he said that was going to be the death knell of music. Where are we at now? Mm -hmm. What happened? All the fucking cool hippies from the universities are still in charge. Yep. He predicted it. He said the worst thing that was going to happen was the hippies coming in and saying like that they knew how to make all the music cool. Well, well, Zappa had no love for hippies, which is another reason I liked him. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Zappa was cool. But yeah, yeah, there was that brief window in the aughts where Gen X really started to actually fill those jobs and start taking the reins. And then the people up top decided, no, no, the money is with millennials. And it was over. I mean, I think the real thing was when, when you noticed overnight that Cartoon Network went, or uh, uh, Adult Swim went from all these great shows to uh, Tim and Eric. Yeah. It was yeah. Over. That was like overnight. Suddenly Space Ghost is gone. Brat is gone. Uh, all these great shows are gone. Uh, Tim and fucking Eric. 
And That's Spike TV right. was immediately castrated. Yeah, Spike TV was no longer running MXC and all the good stuff. Suddenly, mm -hmm. the man show is gone. Yeah, the man show. It was, it was all woke garbage. G4 stopped being about actual video games and yeah. role playing mm -hmm. and started to be like stupid shit. I, I think that was around the same time I stopped watching G4. Yeah. Mm hmm. And oh, anti gravity um, room disappeared too. I don't know if you guys remember that show. No, that was the show that made G4 happen, and they covered oh. comic books, video games, and mm. tabletop RPGs. Mm. And the return of G4 has shown everything that went wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> um. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Star, I watched the I watched the rant and I I it took all my power to not punch my computer screen when she well, was talking. If there was any question when it all thoroughly went wrong with comics and everything else, I pinned the date on 2012. And if I needed any more confirmation, today in my research I have discovered fourth wave feminism started officially in 2012. Did it really? Yes. <laughs> Where the third wave, you know, Spice Girl, Riot Girl, girl power of uh, Gen X mm -hmm. ends. And the uh, fourth wave intersectionalist took over. Is officially 2012. It is the apocalypse. It kind of was. <laughs> the world ended as we knew it. Wow. Uh, on a side note, as much as people want to shit on the Spice Girls, I appreciate what they were. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have actually read their backstory and what they did. Those chicks did it all on their own. They were supposed to be a corporate girl band. And uh, Victoria Adams' dad had went through their contract and said, no, they're fucking you over. Go do it on your own. So they did it on their own. And yeah, everybody rips on them. But I really do appreciate their hustle. Like I actually and they did have a they had a great message they really did oh yeah, at, it at least was, compared to today <laughs> well yeah it was, well, you could be a any type of girl but it was girl power well as i recall the feminism of spice girls was i'll tell you what i want okay <laughs> yes <laughs> you know what yes that and uh standards yeah. you know sex positive but with standards I, how can I say no to that? I mean, yeah, they I all like, kind of look pretty trashy, but that's. Me. I liked that uh, video, Say You'll Be There, where they, they kidnap the guy, steal his, I think it was a GT, and tie him up with their bras and leave him in the desert to die. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't seen that. The, the video, they decided the video was going to be a cross between Faster Pussycat Kill Kill and Mad Max, and they did it. It's wow. Great. Watch the video. And actually, the song is pretty kick ass, too. I got to admit, I'm going to tell everybody one of my guilty pleasures is the first Al Spice Girls album. I still like it. I liked it when it first came out when I was in high school. I honestly wanted to be a cross between Sporty Spice and Posh Spice. Oh, the two best looking ones? Uh, you know what? Sporty Spice was always told she was the ugly one. I actually think she's very pretty, but yeah. they made mm -hmm. her look ugly. She's also the best singer. And then uh, Sp uh, Posh Spice is Victoria Adams. She scored David Beckham yeah. as mm -hmm. like one of the richest people in the world now. So, hey, she made out. Okay, I, I have a response to this one, but Kat has to read it. Uh, Retinac says, uh, people used to ask who is your favorite spice. It was always scary. Well, you know, there's apparently a story. I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently she was too scary for Prince. Hmm? They tried to bag her and she was too scary. <laughs> that, that, that's not bragging, right? <laughs> I'm so, not surprised. So, Have you seen her interviews? She is like, on, she's got ADHD or something, man. <laughs> so, okay. So was that really a thing? Who was your favorite spice? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so so then when Revolting Cox did Who's Your Favorite Cock, that was what they were parroting? Probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah, there and, was a, a Who's Your Favorite Cock, yeah. And, and I'll admit, uh, before uh, personalities came into the mix and drama, uh, I like Ginger. Ginger was hot. 
I'm not mm -hmm. going to lie. Jerry Hallowell was gorgeous. They honestly, I thought they were all gorgeous. I oh, it yeah. really, when I heard how um, like Sporty Spice, uh, Melanie Chisholm mm -hmm. ended up with an eating disorder because they kept saying she was ugly. So she stopped eating. Yeah, that's yeah, heartbreaking. It, yeah, the British tabloids were cruel to them. Okay. They told Victoria Adams she had an ugly smile, hence Posh Spice never smiled. That's really? why she always looks serious. Oh. Well, her... the British press is pretty vicious. Yeah, so I mean, they basically all got di eating disorders. They they all like turn. I don't want to say they turned against each other, but they were able to mm -hmm. cause division. And it just, yeah, that's why they ended up kind of splitting in the end. Though, mm -hmm. yes, Jerry Hallowell did cause drama because oh. she, yeah. Well, you know, for that matter, you know that they used to completely savage robert smith of the cure for for being fat as well mm -hmm. i mean just the british press was like the original tumblr yeah oh, how much they'd savage boy george yeah yeah but at least he would be like fuck you and keep going that's why oh, yeah. yeah boy george yeah same with uh robert smith they just yeah. laugh at them it's like Pff, yeah. whatever you go back but, to I doing mean, acid <laughs> they were able to get those girls when they were in their early 20s and they're still trying to figure out who they are and I'll constantly tell them that they're ugly or they're not doing something right or they're too fat. I can see why that freaked them out and made them get eating disorders and go batshit. Well, that and they went from, uh, you know, basically nobodies to having a, a top album and a movie in like, what, a year, year and a half? Yeah. And I can answer that question. I got drunk with my best friend and I watched that movie and I fucking loved it. <laughs> it was great. That it's so of, cheesy bad. It's good. Has one of my favorite lines of any movie. When the speeding melon hits the wall, it's Christmas time for the crows. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I always like the don't put your cold cream in the refrigerator because some of us will mistake it for mayonnaise. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, I actually like Spice World. Everybody knows now I'm actually a Spice Girls fan. I appreciate what those women went through. Hey, you're and old enough now. You you can, you know, f you know wave that freak flag high, you know? <laughs> yeah. I've Enjoy guilty pleasures. I have a lot of guilty pleasures. I'll give you guys another one that you're all going to laugh at. Hall and Oates. Because when I'd go on road trips with my parents, my dad would put that on. And I'd just sit in the front seat with him while he's driving. And we'd listen to Hall and Oates. So every time I hear a Hall and Oates song, even though it's cheesy, smooth jazz, <laughs> I, I just it drive Steve nuts. Because, you know, I'm like, no, you can't turn the channel off. I want to listen to Sarah smile. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that's great actually yeah i i just i have no shame and steve just grits his teeth and does it because he doesn't want a grumpy wife so <laughs> yeah, uh, that, okay, just four minutes. okay that that that's quite a admission there yes so uh, wow there, we'll i i like hollow notes guys don't judge <laughs> no 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 wolf liking kazam we're gonna have to have uh, you know, we're going to have to ask uh, Shanene about Kazam. There you go. Okay, you guys are going to well, you know again. What is Mando. Kazam? What? What is Kazam? Oh! <laughs> oh, holy shit. Oh, Did I miss something? Okay, okay hold oh, on, hold oh, on. Oh, are I you gonna, think, okay, uh, let's see if I can find it. Okay, you, you're going to show, you're going to find it? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, damn, because I can't, I can't say anything until you find it. There you go. Okay. All right. You ready? Okay. Okay. Uh, it's sharing Amazon right at the moment. Okay. Let me share. Okay. There it is. Are you ready? Now, yes. there won't be any sound, but. But that's okay. You don't need sound. Wait, is this the Shaq film? That it is. Okay, <laughs> never mind. I know. Because didn't everybody say that this was Shazam with Sinbad? 
<laughs> yeah, that's the thing is it's one of those uh um what's it called? Uh, Mandela effect things. So this is Disney's new live action kid? Aladdin, right? How did this kid survive that fall? Wait, he comes out of a boom box? Oh yeah, my does. god, he comes out of a boom box. Yeah, no. Uh, wait, have you seen this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've blocked most of it, but yes, I have seen it. But did Wolf say he's the one that saw this? Wolf loves it. Oh my gosh. Okay, Wolf, I will watch it for you. Has inherited a genie who just won't get out of his life. He didn't really inherit a genie, he more fell on him. <laughs> Okay, as a kid, I'd be happy if raining fast food. <laughs> Cloudy with a chance of McDonald's. You know, I don't think you could make this today. No. no. I think it would offend somebody. <laughs> Okay, we need to do um, an episode where we talk about cheesy movies and music that we love. Sure, no <laughs> I'm problem. All for that. Because, like I said, I, I, I've got plenty. I mean, like, there's another one you guys are going to kill me for. You'd be like, what's wrong with you, Janelle? I like Xanadu. And it's Gene Kelly's <laughs> last movie. And it's disco roller skating. And it has Olivia Newton-John. And she was super hot. She was super hot. You and know who yes. else loves Xanadu? Who? Cinema snob. Yes. Get the fuck out. Oh, uh, yeah. He... He have, so he did a thing on it? Oh, yeah. yeah, he did full. Okay. Actually, he loves all those, uh, you know, disco musicals. Mm -hmm. I am not a disco musical person, except for two movies: Xanadu and The Wiz. <laughs> I like The Wiz <laughs> too. <laughs> I oh yeah, I have a lot of things that I like that people are like. What the hell is wrong with you? Your favorite movies are Terminator and Aliens, but you'll sit and watch The Wiz and Xanadu. <laughs> well, you know. You, you JEC says spectrum. Xanadu's unwatchable. No, it's not. Some people it is, yes. I don't think you can buy it. Oh, but... shit, the apple. Yeah, there you go, oh, the apple. Oh, my God. Now, that that is, wow. What's the apple? Oh. The third entry in the, um, oh, I forget what they called the trilogy, but it was Jesus yeah. Christ Superstar, Godspell, and then the apple. the apple. And the apple was kind of an abortion. <laughs> it wasn't what it was supposed to be. No, but not by a long shot. Because Menachem Golan got his hands on it. Yes. And it just went to shit. Well, they were desperate for funding because um, Godspell did not do very well. And so all the uh, old backers pulled out. Yeah, so I mean, then uh, Menachem got it. I mean, yeah, the first two, you know, were supposed to be kind of this New Testament disco musical kind of thing. Christianity. And then the third one is like this bizarre uh pseudo apocalyptic sci-fi police state yeah uh, music industry the, from hell it's not supposed to, but the apple is supposed to be the garden of eden what yes the fuck? it oh, is man. supposed to be the garden of eden well you know look it was made by menachem golem i mean the guys from israel what, what did he know about the new testament Oh, okay. I don't know who this guy is. Is he like the oh, you don't know? of movies? Menachem? Oh, my God. Golem um, and Globus. Yes. Nope. No? Jesus, uh, Golem I, and Globus, I really uh, do live on, under a rock. <laughs> uh, Golem and Globus. Um, they canon were a, films, right? Yeah, Canon films. The B-movie the B movie giant. Uh, okay, I have um, to look this guy up. I might have seen his stuff and just not mindless known it. action and films that really wish they were Death Wish. Ooh, then I have probably seen one of his films and just didn't know. 
Most likely. Well, he made all the Death, Death Wish sequels, didn't he? Uh, that I'm not sure. I just know that like most of his films are trying to be Death Wish. Okay, I've seen Death Wish 1, 2, and 3. The originals. Uh, yeah, everything that he did tried to be Death Wish. Okay, let's see. Uh, the Bloodsport movie, Death Warrant... The uh, blood 19... sport? You mean the Jean Claude Van Damme blood sport? Because yep. I've seen yep. that, and that's fucking phenomenal. Missing in action with uh, Chuck Norris, the 1990s uh, Reb Brown Captain America. No, it's not the Reb Brown one, or is it the Reb Brown one? Is it? I think so. I could, uh, I could be wrong. Or is it the Matt Salinger so. one? I think it's the I've, Salinger one. I've seen that one. I've seen Mission Missing in Action. Uh, Breakin and Breakin Two. I've seen Breaking Two. <laughs> the Lou Ferrigno uh, Hercules movies. Mm -hmm. um, American Cyborg. Oh yeah, American Cyborg. It, yeah. The, the, okay, the, yeah. And then he randomly did one of my favorite films of all time as a kid, which is the, the it was made for TV called Too Much, about a little girl getting lost in Japan with her robot pal. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, it was a great film. All the American Ninja films. Yes, all of the American Ninja films. American Ninja. Is that the one with Eric Roberts? Uh, oh, I'm sure he was in them. Uh, starring Michael Dudikoff mm -hmm. as the American Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this oh, is this actually is, the apple. Yeah, this is the apple. Oh, my Lord. That is This is the Christian. apple. This is not very Christian at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're getting back to breaking. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, the apple featuring the song, I'm Coming For You. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Like, I thought the first Death Wish was violent until I saw the second one. That one has Lawrence Fishburne as, a, as one of the rapists. Really? Yes. <laughs> Shit. I just know that uh, um, Maria Sirtis was uh, hired by Canon to be rape victim number two in like most of their films. <laughs> yeah, she actually said if Gene Roddenberry hadn't have hired her as uh, Troy, she would have always stayed uh, rape victim number two. Yeah. She said that she owed Gene Roddenberry everything. Now, oh, here's a strangely Force? excellent movie they made. I fucking love that film. It's based on a book called The Space Vampires. Yeah. Yes. And that movie is great and thoroughly underrated, especially the full director's cut. Mm -hmm. I have not had a chance to see the full director's you cut, and to. I have it, looked it for is, it. You need to see it. It is available on Blu-ray. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, Lou Ferrigno chucks a bear into space to make it a, a constellation. Oh, does it become Ursa Major? Yeah. Yep. Oh, shit. There's American Ninja. Okay, no, that's not the movie I was thinking of with Eric Roberts. But I do like those double claw weapons. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> I, I think you get a sense of what kind of movies these were. Oh, these Time Bandits, kind of, of course films. we know that. Okay, yeah. These are my kind of films. I love cheesy B films more than yeah. A list films. Ah, Chuck Norris and Grandma Man. I can't sense. remember that actor's name, but I remember him from Trancers too. He was actually a burn victim, and that's why his nose looks so narrow. Oh, is that why? Okay. Yeah, that's why his face looks so strange. He was actually a burn victim, and that's why he got roles being like strange looking villains. Oh, okay. Now I feel bad about calling him Grandma Man. <laughs> okay, Delta Force. Now the funny thing is, is when I saw this movie, I thought it was just the portrayal of the uh, Muslim terrorists. I thought was just completely like, oh come on, oh, that shit. is so over bullshit. the top, right? <laughs> and then after 9/11, and we started actually hearing speeches from these guys and hearing about the actions of the Muslim terrorists, it's like, holy shit, that's exactly how they behaved. <laughs> I forgot how good Canon films were for real. Yes, oh yeah, they're, they're just, you know, you turn off your brain for two hours. Well, they, and then there's some that are, uh, you don't turn your brain off. Oh, that's true. Like Life Force. 
Wait, that's and right. If they did Cyborg, they did the entire Slinger series because there were Cyborg, Knights, and Omega Doom. It was a trilogy. Oh, really? okay. Yes. And they're fucking awesome. And then there was... Um, it showed that they did the Masters of the Universe movie. <laughs> uh, the remake of Invaders from Mars. That was great. I love that movie. It kind of scared the shit out of me of his, as a kid, but I liked it. It's a fun movie. Uh, the original is is a piece of art. Uh, it's amazing, but the remake's a lot of fun. See, I've never been able to find the original. I always find the remake. Uh, um, you can actually, I think, find it on um, Amazon Prime or just watch it on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, my mom told me when she saw Invaders from Mars as a kid, that was a scary fucking movie. <laughs> but... That, that's why she let me watch the remake because she was all excited that it was a remake. And then she she did what I do. She's like, well, in the original, the general gets taken over. Why wasn't he taken over in the remake? Didn't the remake have the uh, kid from Last Action Hero, I think? I think they did, yeah. All right. Well, we've been on for two hours. We've given them, we've given the audience their money's worth. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was 1018. My son and my husband are probably already asleep. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> That's fine. I, I totally enjoyed tonight. So if you haven't purchased my books or have you, if you've already purchased my books, maybe you need a t-shirt. Maybe you need an unwanted baby dinner of the people t-shirt because comrade Stalin says yum. Isn't that shirt kind of relevant now with the baby formula shortage? Yeah, I was trying to, I was trying to decide if I should be completely, you know, heartless and go yes, because in these uh, troubled times where we're looking down the barrel of a recession, you know, yeah. <laughs> and with Roe versus Wade coming up. Oh, God. oh we're not going there. That, that's just. <laughs> yes, I'm being totally tasteless here, but babies aren't tasteless. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's you know, buy this. There stuff. you go. Because everybody loves small furry creatures. Yeah. You wouldn't want to eat those. I have stories I want to write, but I've got to finish a book about boobs and okay. feminists trying to destroy them. How many people say that with despair? I got to write a book about boobs. Because I'm <laughs> writing about the bad side of things. If it was just appreciation, that would be different. He's writing about the annihilation of boobs, not how awesome boobs are. He's having to write the sad stuff. But you're doing it for a good cause. You're saving the boobs. Yes, I am. My, my point is, is I know plenty of people out there know not there's something wrong with these arguments. They just can't quite put words to it. And I'm explaining what's wrong with it. I think I need to get for you that Sarah McLaughlin song to play no! while you're writing the bad stuff because this thing, you're saving the boobs. You're going to shoot? I'll, I'll shoot myself at you. I mean, she was good when she was goth, but then when she decided to go adult contemporary, it's like, Sarah, what happened to you? Did you see the royalties she got from that song? Yeah. Like, Come on, Sarah. You used to tour with Skinny Puppy. What the fuck? <laughs> no, she didn't. Yeah. I had no clues that she was goth. Yeah, she used to be goth. Oh, holy shit. I would have never guessed. I can't wait to tell Steve that. <laughs> well, now she makes everyone cry. <laughs> Especially with those uh, those uh, abandoned pet commercials. Yeah. Yes. Jesus. You know, it got to the point where, like... Um, uh, TV channels refused to run that commercial because they were actually losing viewers because people would switch the channel when that song oh, would start playing. I would. I'd be mm -hmm. like, oh God, now I got to watch puppies getting tortured. I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, we're done. <laughs> you know, I did a head trauma video with that song. You where did, and I don't remember what you did. It was a collection of various pugs, and they looked like they were all about to cry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and in the background, I've got Jimmy Kimmel crying and talking about, uh, I forget what he was crying about, but it was one of those things where Jimmy Kimmel's faking tears for some liberal cause. He's being a whiny little... And then it, <laughs> then it says, you know, every year, X many pugs die committing suicide uh, because of Jimmy Kimmel's crying. <laughs> 
head trauma because I want to watch that so bad now. <laughs> I believe so. Let me see if I can't pull it up real quickly and I'll I'll post the link. Okay. <laughs> that sounds great. That's how I want to end my night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and I want to make another Kami Slayer video because those are so fun, but I, I, I cannot do anything until I finish uh, this book. I mean, shit, I've got a new computer sitting here waiting to be set up and I, I haven't even touched it yet because you've had it since November because I cannot spare the time to uh, take everything off the current computer, swap it, set the other computer up. I can't spare the time and it's driving me nuts. You've got so much fodder for commie slayer angel now with the, <laughs> What is a woman and yeah. Roe v. Wade? I mean, I can't wait. Here we go. Jimmy Kimmel kills puppies. This is it. Okay, here's the video. There you go. And yeah, it, it was one of those videos. I thought it would do better, honestly, but I don't know. The head trauma channel is also horribly throttled. That's too bad because that channel is great. The, the lack of political correctness makes it a gem. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's call it a night, everyone. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining us. And as always, Aloise did a wonderful job setting up our Discord. Discord and the link is in the description as well as links to buy all of my stuff. So do it. Thank you, everyone. Yes, have a good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>